It's raining. The action takes place at school. Several zombies are moving towards the wooden barn. The guy outside knocks on the door and shouts for them to open it, because it's him, Zhang Heng. They're all coming here, we need to save him. Inside the barn, several schoolgirls hid under a table in fear. Zhang Heng continues to scream to be let in. Three guys anxiously hold the door from the inside, and one of them thinks and wonders what to do. The girl screams and demands to be let in. Zhang Heng is their classmate, how can they leave him there? The girl continues to insist persistently, saying to let him in quickly. One of the guys screams in horror, saying that she is joking, there are a lot of zombies in there. Zhang Heng must have already been bitten. They won't let him in. The girl, nervously, replies that she is the head of the class and will never leave her classmate in trouble. She added that if they let him in, she would face the consequences. Zhang Heng is still talking to them, which means he is not infected. Do they have a conscience? He's going to die there now. Three guys stand indecisively. One of them clenched his teeth. He was telling another classmate that on the count of three he would open the door, and as soon as Zhang Heng came in, he should close it. Yibei agreed. The guy started counting down, and everyone froze in anticipation. At the end of the countdown, he pressed the door handle, and it suddenly swung open. A zombie immediately bursts in and knocks Yibei off her feet. Several schoolchildren scream in horror. The stunned guy says that Zhang Heng is infected. Everyone rushes away from the door. Yibei puts his hand up and the zombie bites through it. The guy starts screaming in pain. And then memories flash through his head. He sees himself without an arm, shuddering in pain, a crowd of zombies and a head girl screaming to run. What follows is a vision of a burning city and a certain dark sphere. Somewhere the question arises, what does he want to do with it? A certain hooded man answers, and the answer immediately follows, there are only two things he wants. The stranger presses the lever while the crowd watches. An adult man without an arm lies in a time machine. After pressing the lever, darkness sets in. Bright sparks fly and a voice sounds that says that this is revenge and salvation. A few seconds passed, and now Yi Bei is standing in bewilderment, holding the door with his classmates. A voice from behind the door asks to let him in. The girl commandingly says, give him the opportunity to enter. She is the head of the class, and will never leave her classmate in trouble. The guy thinks to himself, Lai Ruoxi, as if she is still young now. The schoolgirl continues to persistently demand that Zhang Heng be let in. The guy thinks to himself and laughs evilly, this is a day that he will remember forever. Finally, he is here. He continues to say to himself, the mechanic did everything for him to come back and change everything. He immediately says out loud, there are a lot of zombies outside, Zhang Heng has most likely already been bitten. He continues and asks, does she really want to be responsible for what happens when they let him in? The headman answers excitedly, did Yi Bei see with his own eyes that Zhang Heng was bitten? Placing her hand on her chest, she says that if something goes wrong, she will take care of everything. Yi Bei, with a smile on his face, invites her to open the door herself. He extends his hand to her. Everyone freezes in surprise and anticipation. Lai Ryuaxi exclaims offended, which one is the man? He or she? The headman continues reproachfully, after all, she is a girl, and how is he not ashamed at all? Yibei chuckles, asking what is she ashamed of? She's not scared. People like her can only talk pretentiously and always leave the dirty work to others, so that in the end they can take all the glory for themselves. The guy called Lai Ryuaxi a hypocrite. The girl screamed that she had had enough. She said she could handle it herself. Approaching the door, the schoolgirl pushes away her classmate, and as soon as she presses the doorknob, the monster bursts inside the barn, knocking those standing nearby to the floor. Yibei shouts that the door has opened. It crashes inside. Lai Ruoxi says while lying on the floor that she is in pain. She stares in amazement at the zombie standing in front of her. The monster opens its mouth. The schoolchildren scream in horror that Zhang Heng has become infected. One of the guys says that they are at a dead end. Lai Ryuoxi grabs him by the shirt and screams for the guy to save her. She pushes the guy straight towards the monster, but suddenly Yi Bei, smiling predatorily, kicks her in the stomach and she quickly falls onto the zombie. And when the monster is about to bite her, holding his head, the wrench quickly hits him in the skull. Yi Bei, who caused this, grins. The defeated zombie falls to the floor along with the schoolgirl. She asks the guy to help and extends her hand to him. But the young man looks at her angrily and says to himself that Lai Ryuaxi oppressed him for half his life, and now it's her turn. He lifts the door and slams it in the girl's face, left lying on top of the zombie. 
she screams desperately, asking him what he is doing. The guy slams the door. The rest of the schoolchildren exclaim in surprise. Yibei menacingly asks them why they are frozen. Rather, we need to help him barricade himself. One of the guys replies that he will help now and another guy and a girl join him. The students quickly barricade the door with boxes and crates. Lai Ryuaxi outside screams in fear and asks the question, what are they doing? She asks to be let in, to be saved, desperately knocking on the door. Everyone continues to hold barricades. The girl continues to say that they cannot do this to her. She's their head girl. Nobody moves. Here Lai Ryuaxi shouts to someone not to come in. A scream is heard, but the schoolchildren continue to hold the door. The screams stop, some time passes, and the sun drops below the horizon. One of them says that she has stopped screaming. Another girl asks if Lai Ryuaxi escaped. One of the guys standing behind says that he did not expect Yubei to decide to kick out the headman. His classmate speaks with concern how scared she is. Another girl adds that the guy has always been friendly and asks the question why has he changed so much. Yibei stands with the key at the door and turns around menacingly after hearing the conversation. The girls close their eyes in fear. The guy asks with a smile on his face, are they really afraid of him? One of the girls answers in the negative, scared. A classmate standing at the door, still holding it, thanked Yibei. If it weren't for him, the guy would have died because of the headman. A second student joins him, saying that Lai Ryuaxi deserved it, because because of her, everyone almost died. The third girl supports their conversation. She says that fortunately Yibei reacted quickly, otherwise they would have been in big trouble. Another guy agrees that the head girl wanted to set everyone up. Yibei smiles madly, saying that it is good that they are not afraid. He asks to open the door so he can go outside and look around. Everyone turns to look at him in amazement. One of the guys asks what did he say? Outside. Yibei says that it was really mean of him to kick out the headman. He wants to go out and see if she is alive. One of the guys asks not to make them laugh because he knows that there are still zombies outside. The other guy agrees, saying it's too dangerous. Yibei indignantly shouts for the door to be opened for him. One of the guys does it in a hurry and Yibei heads outside with a wrench. Coming out of the barn, he thinks about the fact that the headman and Jang Heng are not in sight. He asks mentally if the zombies really left because of the dawn. The guy squints from the sun and covers his face with his hand. Classmates who were watching all the time sharply slammed the door. Yibei turned around hearing a voice on the other side, shouting for them to hurry up and barricade the door, not letting him in anymore. Another voice told him that this freak was too dangerous. Who knows who he'll kick out next time. A third person added, saying to look at the calm expression on the guy's face. He's a natural-born killer. Yibei grinned and looked back. The schoolchildren who remained inside saw him move forward and were surprised. One of them asked if he was going to visit them. Where did he go? And then he screams in horror that a zombie has appeared on the street and Yibei is coming straight at him. Someone asks the question, is this guy sick? He grins, squeezes the key in his hand tighter, runs up and quickly heads towards the monster. The schoolchildren watching from the window were dumbfounded. The monster let out a terrible roar, and then the guy brought a wrench down on him with a scream. With one blow, he smashed the monster's head. One of the guys sitting in the barn exclaimed in shock, adding that Yibei had really gone crazy. The guy lowered the wrench to the ground and caught his breath. He reached out to the monster's head, pulled out a small green ball, took it in his hand, and looked closely. He exclaimed joyfully, it was energy black gold. Yibei was pleased and said that this is the source of doomsday and an indispensable item for mechanics. Zombie footsteps were heard, and Yibei turned around towards the sound, without expressing any emotion. The old zombie man looked straight at him and walked towards the guy. Yibei grabbed a wrench and slammed it down on the monster's head with all his might. Two classmates watched this from the barn. One of them asked, Is this a joke? Another guy exclaimed and asked the question, Did Yibei really decide to kill all the zombies? The girl sitting next to her felt sick from what she heard. The fair-haired guy continued to zealously say that Yibei's character had really changed because just recently he was a timid, inconspicuous guy. Looking out the window, he asked, was it all a pretense? How scary. His classmate told him that he couldn't believe that Yibei was really such a person. One of the girls in the back was sitting on the floor crying while the others were hiding in horror under the table. One of the guys, looking at the killing of zombies, said that since Yibei is so good, then let him come back and help them fight the zombies. Another classmate who was also in the barn exclaimed in disgust what he was talking about. He asked, Why do they need this madman? 
The guy answered and asked a counter question, what should they do then? After all, there is no food in this closet, and they cannot hang around here forever and wait for death. Then a wrench suddenly breaks the window glass and fragments fly towards the guys. They try to cover themselves with their hands. Yibei asks them why they will just sit here. He invites them to go kill zombies together. It's so much fun. Two guys, trembling with fear with wide open eyes, scream that a monster has appeared behind them and is about to bite the guy. But Yibei reacts in time and kicks the monster in the head. He falls and the guy finishes him off with a wrench. Classmates watch through the window as a guy deals with zombies. When he stops moving, Yibei spits and wipes the blood from his face. The teenagers watch this in fear. The guy turns to them and says that this dark zombie liquid is disgusting and makes him sick. He asks himself, what if she is even contagious? The young man continues to say that he initially wanted to go with his classmates, but given that he can mutate, it is perhaps better to part with them here. Yibei added that he had no intention of harming them, and he hoped that everyone could survive this time. He moves away from the barn and heads towards the school. One of the guys watching this asks if he will really leave like that. Nobody answers, silence hangs. At this time, Yibei walks through the school stadium with a wrench on his shoulder, climbs the stairs, and heads out. Judgment Day is the beginning of the end of humanity. A zombie virus has swept the world, infecting 50% of the population and causing complete economic and political collapse. The number of zombies grew every day, and people living in fear and despair fought each other for living space and food, plunging into endless anarchy. Professor Zhang Han, an expert on zombies, called this time a dark era. Yibei thought that because of the action of the elder Lai Ryuaxi, he was bitten on the hand and then had to amputate it in order to survive. After that, he wandered for 50 years, starved and suffered violence. Until he met a mechanic who, with his last strength before his death, sent him back in time, to the moment when everything was just beginning. That is, here. Yibei continued to walk along the city street. Two men hid behind the barricades and watched him. One of them asked in surprise whether he was really normal. The other man responded by wondering how he could walk down the street carefree with a smile on his face without being afraid of anything. Apparently, he was mad with hunger and decided that he had nothing to lose. He added that maybe it was worth calling him to them, because it was too dangerous outside. The second man answered, simultaneously asking if he had gone crazy. There is a crowd of zombies at their door, and who knows, maybe the guy is already infected, he asked. Yibei continued walking. There were three zombies standing on the playground. He growled and didn't move. Noticing the movement, they rushed towards the guy from behind. One of the men, still watching, exclaimed. Another said that the guy decided to die, who is looking for food at such a time, he asked. Yibei managed to react, smiling, he took a wrench and with one hand tore off the zombie's head. Then, just as quickly, he attacked the second monster and knocked the third one to the ground, breaking his head. The men watched this in shock. What the hell? How cruel he is, they thought. From behind the window, someone moved the curtain. A certain woman looked angrily at the guy. She added that sooner or later she would kill him. At this time, Yibei was breathing heavily while standing next to the corpses. But then he heard the sound of approaching footsteps. It was three more monsters coming straight towards him. The guy looked at them with displeasure. The monsters rushed towards him. He thought as he ran away, made a little noise, and there was such a big chase after him. Several people watched what happened from behind the window. One of them said that he was running here. Yibei turned his head, noticing the shelter. He began knocking on the iron gates, saying that they would let him in. The guy began talking into the CCTV camera hanging next to the entrance. He asked to open the door, saying that he was wounded and zombies were chasing him. Two men watched this from the inside. The elderly man, lighting a cigarette, said, after he had stirred up the crowd, even the least idiot would not open the door. Another younger man, looking at the cameras upset, said that he couldn't see anything from here. Yibei looked down silently. Suddenly a monster appeared from around the corner and rushed towards the guy. Yibei quickly reacted and hit him in the head, and the monsters kept coming. The guy threw a wrench at the nearest zombie, quickly fell and crawled into the gap between the gate and the ground. They closed noisily. The creatures remaining on the street scratched, but could not get inside. Yibei stood up and there were shelves of food in front of him. A certain girl looked at him from behind the table. At this time, from the windows of the nightclub, several guys were discussing what they had seen. One of them asked if everyone saw it. The second added, who would have thought that the boy could kill a zombie, he asked. 
The guy with the mohawk on his head turned around and said discouragedly, Scalapendra. There the guy single-handedly dealt with six monsters, and he was also able to climb into the store across the street. Scalapendra, a man sitting on the sofa with two girls, laughed contentedly. Interesting. It looks like these zombies are not that strong. If a schoolboy can do it, then so can they, he said. In the store, Yibei smiled, looked towards the table, and said that he sees her. Let him come out. And also to quickly give away the remote control for the roller door. The girl was silent. The guy sighed and immediately bent over, raising his hands to his chest. He began plaintively to say that he was in great pain because of the open wound and to ask for help. The girl got up and ran over with medicine. As soon as she threw it out, Yibei grabbed her hand. The girl became embarrassed and shouted for him to let her go. She stood scared, wearing only her shirt. Yibei pulled her towards him and grinned and said that he was not going to eat her, so he should not be afraid. You just need to give the remote control and he will let her go. The girl screamed and asked what kind of remote control it was while holding it in her hand. Yibei noticed this and loudly demanded to give it back. He let go of his hand as soon as he grabbed the remote control, and she rushed away from the table. She watched in fear, peeking around the corner. Yibei pushed the iron shelf with his foot. The girl screamed and closed her eyes. The guy shouted asking, Did you fool believe that he was wounded? How gullible she is. Yibei recalled a rainy day when he was lying on a bloody bed in a grocery store. The same girl bandaged his hand and the guy writhed in pain. The girl said and exhaled with relief that she had bandaged it. Yibei thanked her because she saved him. The girl smiled and replied that it was very dangerous outside and her dad told her to stay in the store. She added, taking away the first aid kit so that the guy could rest while she went to get food. Yibei said thank you. The girl left the room, and the guy thought what a kind girl she was, and during the whole long journey that he had gone through, only she decided to open the door and let him in. After all, then he would have died from blood loss or from zombie bites. Suddenly, there was a scream from the first floor. The girl asked what they were doing. Yibei listened. Several people entered the store. The tall man thanked her for opening the door, smiling widely. The girl asked in fear, because didn't they say that they were dying of hunger? The man said, what difference does it make? Now all the products in her store belong to them. The two guys behind smiled sarcastically. The stranger grabbed her face. The girl asked to let her go, because her father would return soon. The man replied that they had already met him and decided to use him as bait. Now there are only them here and nothing will disturb them, he said, licking his lips. The girl was horrified. Some time passed after this. Ibei covered his mouth with his hand while sitting behind the wall, while in the room the men mocked the store owner. A kind girl who was abused and then killed by a villain, all because of excess kindness. Back then, Ibei could only hide around the corner in fear, but now he will repay the debt and save her. However, first she must realize that there is darkness under the sun, even if it makes her think badly of him. Then there was a knock on the door. Yibei shouted, asking what does she want? Let him not interfere when he takes a shower. The girl backed away from the door and said that she noticed his dirty clothes and therefore brought new ones. The guy winced. He told her to leave the new clothes at the entrance and get out of here immediately. The girl left with her head down. Yibei asked himself, how can such an obedient person survive in a post-apocalyptic world? Doesn't matter. How long has it been since he took such a good shower? As the number of zombies increases, more and more sources will become polluted. The water supply is expected to be cut off here in a few days. The guy turned on the tap and left the shower stall, drying his hair with a towel. Luckily, he's in the store, so the supplies here will last a long time. Yibei seriously looked at himself in the mirror. He thought that he needed to start looking for equipment and weapons. He thought it was nice to see himself young. What nostalgia! This young soft skin is amazing. No back pain, no pain in legs, how good it is to be young. He touched my stomach and said that there was trouble with my abs and that I would need to work on them. Yibei came out of the shower room, clean clothes were lying next to the door. The guy picked up the white shirt and looked at it carefully. He shouted dissatisfiedly with the question, this girl, why did she give him this suit? How will he fight zombies in this? The girl sitting on the first floor listened in confusion. At this time, in a nightclub, Scalapendra stood in the middle of the room with a knife on his shoulder and asked everyone to listen to him. He said that this karaoke has alcohol and food, but they can't stay in this hole for a long time. They must create another survival base to cope with future difficulties. 
They will come out and kill all the zombies. He pointed the blade of his knife towards the store, where several monsters stood at the door. Then they will take over this store and provide themselves with food. The man smiled and added that besides, a cute little girl lives in this store, and if his memory serves him, she is the only one left there, with the exception of a schoolboy who came there recently. The other two men looked at each other and smiled predatorily. Scalopendra commanded to go kill all the zombies, grab all the food and that girl. The guys armed with various weapons laughed and got ready to leave. At this time in the grocery store, the girl was sitting on a chair and eating, she heard Yi Bei's footsteps. The guy said that he asked her a question and let her get out from behind the table. He had already changed into a clean shirt and trousers and asked if she lived here alone and where was her family. The girl timidly replied that her dad had gone to replenish supplies and promised to return. Suddenly Yi Bei hit the table with his hand and shouted that she was a fool and why did she let a stranger in while she was here alone? Is she seriously not afraid that he might do something to her? The girl answered in fear that he told her that he was wounded, she saw him covered in blood. Yi Bei interrupted her. He asked furiously, didn't she see that zombies were chasing him? Did she even think about what was happening? The girl covered her ears from screaming and replied that she saw it on the CCTV cameras. There were a lot of zombies there. Yi Bei held his head and said wearily, such a naive coward will only become a burden for him over time, and it's better to get rid of her before it's too late. He added that he would be bored alone, and there would be no one to take care of him. So let him listen carefully, because from now on she will do whatever he says. The girl looked at him in shock and raised her hands to her chest. Yi Bei pointed his finger at her and added that if she disobeys even once, he will kill her. At the same time, outside the nightclub, a crowd of zombies was roaring towards the armed men. One of the monsters bit a guy with a mohawk in the head. At one point, they all threw him to the ground while he screamed in pain, unable to resist. A guy exclaimed that the zombies had suddenly gone berserk. Another added that, however, that schoolboy somehow defeated them. Scalopendra shouted at them to kill the monsters and make their way forward. Otherwise, they will all die here. One of the guys turned around and ran away in fear. Scalopendra grabbed him by the hair and threw him into the crowd of monsters. The guy managed to ask the man how he could do this, but the zombies immediately attacked him. The rest continued to fight off the remainder. Someone asked why there are more and more of them. No matter how many times they kill, they don't run out of zombies. Scalopendra ordered a retreat. Everyone rushed to run away from the huge crowd of monsters. In the store, the girl went up to the room where Yi Bei was sitting with food. She came in and said that she had made noodles for him. Yi Bei sat and looked at the energy black gold. The girl took the thermos and said, This is the boiling water he asked for. The guy replied that for now nothing more was required from her, so let her leave and not disturb him until he calls. The girl nodded her head and left. The door slammed shut and Yi Bei opened the lid of the noodle package. He took a fork and began to eat. What a nostalgic taste, but in a few years, such noodles will become a delicacy. He looked out the window and asked himself, where did all the noise on the street come from? Suddenly, the window glass broke and someone's hand grabbed the window sill. It was a scalopendra. He said angrily, the damned zombies won't leave him alone. Only now did he notice Yi Bei continuing to eat noodles and looking straight at him. Scalopendra shouted for the guy to quickly help him climb up. He understands. Scalopendra will kill him if he doesn't help. Yi Bei looked at the stranger with displeasure and took the thermos. The man nervously asked why he took it. The guy opened the lid and spilled all the contents onto the villain's hand. He screamed in pain. Yi Bei smiled evilly and said, if he wants to kill him, then the guy will kill him first. Then two hands grabbed the sleeve of the guy's shirt. Yi Bei looked back and saw a girl asking him to stop. She plaintively asked to let the man in. There was no need to harm him. Scalopendra looked in her direction at the same time as Yi Bei. The guy threateningly told her to leave because he told her not to come in until he called her. Besides, she doesn't even know him. The girl spoke with tears in her eyes. Her dad said that you should not harm people. There was silence in the room. Stupid. The guy asked, isn't she afraid that he might kill her? The girl hesitated, undecided. The man enthusiastically said that he did not want to cause harm, but was simply hungry and in desperation decided to look for food. Finding yourself surrounded by zombies, the only way out was to get here. He smiled awkwardly and added where to go. He doesn't want to jump back into the crowd. Let her be kind and allow him to let him in. He will sit out for a while and leave as soon as the zombies disperse. Yi Bei thought that he should have pushed him back into the crowd while he had the chance. 
but he doesn't want to kill him in front of the girl. The guy looked at the stationary knife that was lying on the table. Then the man climbed into the room. He said, smiling, thank you for your kindness, but now this place belongs to him, and anyone who disobeys him will die. The girl was dumbfounded and horrified. Meanwhile, a crowd of zombies gathered at the doors of the nightclub. Two men who managed to escape held the doors from the inside. One of them said that the zombies had almost broken through and they could no longer hold them back. The second man angrily replied that if it weren't for the stupid idea of a sortie, they could have held out here for several more months. Where could Scalapendra go after they were defeated by zombies? He probably climbed onto the roof of that store, let him die there. The monsters continued to try to get inside. One of the men said, it seems there are more of them outside. The man turned to two girls who were sitting on the sofa to the side. Let them come here and help hold the door. He thought about how he wanted to have a good time with them while Scalapendra was away. He smiled and thought, all that was left was to run to the balcony and jump while they were blocking the door. At this time in the grocery store, Scalapendra laughed and said, this girl is so cute. Did she really choose to believe him? The man said contently, let her not be afraid, instead of killing, he will teach her everything, and they will passionately love each other. He invited her to be his slave. The girl was dumbfounded. The man turned to Yibei and asked how dare he scald him with boiling water. It will be too easy to feed the guy to the zombies, so he needs time to come up with a way to kill. The man madly continued to say that he would crush his bones and then cut off his limbs, and when they dry up, he stuffs them into flower vases. Yibei remained silent and held the utility knife tightly in his hand. Suddenly the girl told the man that their family owned a store, and there was a lot of food downstairs, enough for everyone. She added there are hot sticks, chocolates, instant noodles, and bear-shaped cookies. Scalapendra looked at the girl in surprise. Yibei turned his gaze to her. She continued to say that it would be better for them to eat everything deliciously. Once they are full, they will forget about all their problems. The girl smiled widely. Scalapendra shouted sharply asking the question, Is she kidding me? He sharply extended his hand forward in an attempt to grab the girl with the words, Well, let him have it. The utility knife cut the air in an instant. Yubei cut off the centipede's fingers before he could touch the girl. Scalapendra screamed in pain, squeezing his cut hand. Yubei grabbed the knife to strike again, but the Scalapendra managed to react and grabbed the guy's hand. The man kicked him in the stomach and he flew to the floor. The girl fell next to him. Scalapendra was shaking in pain and clenching his hand. He smiled madly and said that nothing had taken so much from him in his life as Yibei. The guy lay on the floor and thought, the curse seems to be that this blow broke his ribs. At that moment, the man stepped hard on his foot and the guy screamed in pain. The man asked a question before killing him. He wants to know how he dealt with the zombies so easily. They lost many men and were only able to kill a few. He didn't have time to finish. Ibe grinned and replied that if he wants to know, then let him treat him with more respect, and he might reveal his secret. The man looked at the young man contemptuously and said, since he doesn't want to talk, Scalapendra will trample him to death. He started throwing kicks one after another while the guy was lying on the ground. The girl looked at this with insane fear. Ibe thought that trying to teach this little girl a lesson was already worth a lot. Suddenly, he shouted to the Scalapendra to stop. He knows the way, and he will tell it. Scalapendra leaned towards the guy and grabbed him by the shirt and said, if he tells him, maybe he will make his death easier. At this moment, Yibei spat in the man's face, causing him to become furious and throw him into the wall with all his strength. He then kicked him in the stomach. Scalapendra shouted wondering, does he think this is a game? Since he is having so much fun, they will play until death and continue the series of blows. He repeated the phrase die and kicked Yibei in the face, but at that moment, the girl grabbed a stationary knife and stuck it in the villain's shoulder. Scalapendra turned around and was surprised. He pushed the girl away with his hand, grabbed a stationary knife, and shouted that he would kill her. But then there was a blow from behind from Yubei, who hit the man on the head with a stool. He fell to the floor. The guy caught his breath heavily. The girl stood up and asked, Is he dead? She spoke in fear, still asking, Had she really killed a man? Yubei put his hand on her shoulder and said, everything is fine, she did what she had to do with this freak. The girl with tears in her eyes said that she wanted to help him and asked why he changed so suddenly. Are not all people in this world kind? Yubei sat down and said, well, he's not dead yet, let her stop whining and quickly go wash herself. The girl asked again, didn't he die? Then you need to help him quickly. Yubei pushed her out the door and said that he had never met such weak-minded people. 
She's just a fool. He thought how much she infuriates him. This freak also ruined his room. He needs to get rid of him. Yibei grabbed the man by the leg, pulled him to the window, and threw him onto the roof. Scalopendra fell down towards the crowd of zombies. The monsters immediately ran to the man lying on the ground and attacked him. Yibei looked at this and thought that if he had a better knife, he would have cut off his arms and legs before throwing him off. He turned his gaze to the opposite house, where on the wall, holding a pipe, a certain guy shouted that the zombies should not come near him. Yibei caught his attention and asked if there were any survivors there. The guy nervously replied that there was no one, they tried to block the doors, but someone eventually loosened their grip and the zombies were able to break through. Now everyone is dead, he asked Yubei if he could help him, and if he saved him, he would go over to their side. The guy squinted and responded negatively with a thumbs down. He advised him to run if he didn't want to end up in the place of that guy below. The guy turned around where Scalopendra lay, there was a crowd of monsters above him. He turned away and pressed himself harder against the pipe, then pushed off and jumped onto the next balcony. Yibei looked at the guy and thought, it's a pity that the zombies didn't eat all this garbage. Let him not cause any more problems. Some time passed, and it became dark outside. Yibei opened the door and saw a girl sitting on the floor. He asked why she was still here. He asked her to take a shower. She looked at the streak of blood by the window. Yibei said don't look at him like that. That man is already downstairs. The girl asked in surprise, did he run away? The guy responded by asking if she really thought he could resist a crowd of zombies, only if he's not human. The girl bowed her head and sadly asked why the guy killed him. Even if he is bad, he had a chance to become good. Then Yibei sharply hit the wall with his hand. He shouted fool and asked if she had read the fable about the farmer and the viper. He's a bad man. He's a villain. She will save him and he will stab her in the back. The guy kept screaming, in order to survive they must kill people like him, otherwise they will kill them. Doesn't she understand that this is the end of the world? Apocalypse. The girl looked at him and said thoughtfully, Apocalypse. Yibei turned around, there was no use talking to her, he would go and take another shower. All my bones hurt. The girl walked towards Yibei and tried to say something. But before she could finish speaking, she slipped and fell on the guy. He asked worriedly what was wrong with her. The guy picked her up and carried her to the bed. He leaned over her and wondered if she was hurt. There don't seem to be any bruises. He put his hand to her forehead and felt the heat. He got up and went to the closet and thought that there must be medicine here somewhere. He knew something was wrong with her. It was too long ago and he couldn't remember. Finally, the first aid kit was found. Exactly what is needed, Yubei noticed the pink book lying inside. He took it in his hands and read the personalized list of donations. It was written in the book that today she had chemotherapy. It didn't hurt at all. She was even able to play with her friends after that. The doctor said that thanks to the help of many people, she was able to receive treatment. Therefore, in the future, she also wants to become as kind. Yibei realized that it was a medical record. He turned and looked at the unconscious girl. The medical record contained a photograph, age and disease, leukemia. The girl's name was Yao Yu. He lifted the sleeve of the girl's shirt. Her entire arm was covered in bandages. Same thing on the legs. Was this really the reason she wanted to save this freak, no matter what? The guy thought that the world that was so kind to her no longer existed. Yibei touched his pants pocket and took out energy black gold from there. He said that he had it and asked himself, but could it help? The night passed and morning came. The zombies looked at the sun. Yibei woke up at the table, covered with his jacket. He yawned and looked towards the slightly open door. The girl looked at him through the gap. He spoke, she had already woken up, and asked how she was feeling. The girl was embarrassed. Yibei waved his hand and said, apparently everything is fine, then she will make him breakfast. He'll have instant noodles and don't forget to add ham. The girl was about to leave when the guy added, let him prepare his things, they will go in search of her father. Yao Yu looked at the guy questioningly. She asked again, will they go look for her dad? Yibei replied, she said that her father went to get supplies. This store does not seem safe to him, so he would like to quickly find her father and leave the girl with him. She replied that dad told her to stay here until he returned and told her to lock herself and not go out anywhere. Yibei asked how many days has he not returned. Yao Yu lowered her head and said, about three days. The guy asked how much time he spent to replenish supplies. The girl answered, about half a day. Yibei suggested thinking and asked if he doesn't come back for more than this time, what could have happened to him? Yao Yu shuddered and screamed that nothing could happen to him. He called her and said that he would be back soon. 
Yibei reasoned and asked. He has not appeared for three days, and there has been no news all this time, right? Perhaps he was attacked by zombies, or he fell into a trap, and is now waiting for rescue. The guy continued, who will save him if not them? The girl replied that her dad told her not to leave here, no matter what, until he returned. Yibei stood up and walked towards the girl, saying stupid, he must be in trouble now, and she doesn't want to go and help him. Would she rather save that freak than her father? Yao Yu began to shake as she tried to answer. Yibei pointed his finger at her and said that he didn't ask her opinion now because he could just kill her and leave. But he wants to help her because she saved his life, and so they will now go in search of her father. So he will repay his debt. He shouted loudly for her to shut up and quickly go get ready. Yao Yu screamed and ran up the stairs, almost falling. The guy grabbed his head and said tiredly, Nightmare. A crowd of zombies gathered on the city street. They heard a noise. The car came straight at them and, without slowing down, knocked down the monsters. At this time in the grocery store, Yibei was packing a bag of groceries. He looked at Yao Yu and asked what she was hiding. Is she ready? The girl came out from behind the wall. She was dressed in a blue sundress with a backpack on her back. Yibei said displeasedly, Well, she's dressed up. They're not going to a picnic. The girl remained silent. He asked if she had prepared the noodles he asked her for. Yao Yu answered in the affirmative. The guy began to eat breakfast while he ate the girl sat in silence. The young man thought that he needed to wait until the sun rose to its zenith, and as soon as this happened, he would immediately run out and kill the zombies at their door. I remember there are a lot of cars on the roads in good condition now. He should find one that he can start. At the end of the day, he will come for her, and it would be good if she didn't do anything wrong. The girl was eating some snacks. He asked if these were sharp sticks, and he asked me to give one. The girl handed over the package when suddenly a car drove into the store at great speed. Shelves of food began to fall one after another. The guy covered the girl with his body and asked in surprise, is it an earthquake or this? He turned around and asked himself, had the car really driven in? The SUV dented the roller door. The salon door opened and a man in military uniform stepped out of the car. He smiled and said what a great store, it looks like he found a treasure. He kicked the remains of the zombies and said enough, good zombies are dead zombies, despite the fact that they are already the walking dead. He raised his hand and solemnly said that he would take everything in this store. The man walked inside and laughed happily when he saw a shelf of chips. Chips and bear cakes are just what he loves. He began to shovel it all into a bag. He said, most likely, the rest of the supermarkets in the city have already been looted, so after this it's worth going to more remote places. Then a clerical knife appeared at his neck. Yibei warned that if he twitches, he will become a dead man. It's better to throw away what he took. He doesn't want to become zombie food, does he? Yibei doesn't mind. The man was sweating. He abruptly threw the snacks he had on hand at the guy. The young man did not expect this. The man stood up and grabbed the bag with the loot and rushed outside. He managed to get into the cabin, but then Yibei overtook him and pointed a stationary knife. He shouted that the thief would die. The man screamed heart-rendingly for him to be spared and to surrender. He raised his hands. Then Yao Yu shouted for Yi Bei to stop killing people. The guy turned around. The girl stood and hesitatingly said that her store was damaged due to the fault of a stranger. If the guy kills him, there will be no one to pay for the damage. The guy was silent, still holding the knife at the man's neck. He smiled and said, yes, she is right. He turned to the man and said that he had a good car and now it belonged to them. This would be his payment for the store. And they just don't have enough driver. The man sat in fear. Yubei asked the girl to let her load the luggage into the car. She looked at him questioningly. The man awkwardly said to Yubei, let him forgive him. He decided to drive into their store because he was very hungry. How was he supposed to know that there was someone there? Yao Yu was shaking and carrying a huge bag of supplies. She saw a crowd of zombies heading towards the car. She shouted this to warn them. The man said displeasedly, asking, he just crushed a bunch of them, is this a new batch? Yibei ordered everyone to get into the car. They closed the doors and the man started the SUV, mentioning that they should remember to fasten their seat belts. The car quickly moved off and began to shoot down zombies that came along the way. The guy and the girl were shaking in the cabin. The man pressed the gas pedal and continued to shoot down zombies. He was having fun. Yibei shouted, asking what was wrong with him. Did you decide to kill them? He'll kill him for such careless driving. The guy threateningly extended his hand with a stationary knife towards the man. 
he got scared and began to make excuses, saying that he had to get rid of all the zombies before leaving, and besides, the guy had not yet said where to go. Ibei turned around and asked the girl where could her father be now. She replied that he wanted to shop at the Eastern Market. When they last called on the phone, he was there. The man asked again, is it the Eastern Market? That's bad. There were always a lot of people there, and the place must be overrun with zombies now. Yibei frowned and told him to whine less, and since they told him to go there, then he had to go. The man nervously agreed. They drove quickly through the city streets. The stranger asked if they would mind if he turned on the music. It's painfully boring on the road. The guy answered displeasedly that he shouldn't make noise. The man responded positively that then he would sing the song himself because he sings well. Yibei displeasedly threatened to shut his mouth. Yao Yu smiled and giggled. One zombie stood directly in front of the car approaching him. The SUV immediately demolished it. A man with glasses was eating a lollipop and humming. Then he knocked down another zombie, apparently this brought him pleasure. Yibei looked at him and asked if he could calm down for a minute and let him sleep, or did he want them all killed? The man hesitated and said that the guy himself forbade him to turn on the music, and it was boring on the road, so he had to entertain himself. Don't worry, this machine is very durable, so zombies are just bugs to them. Yibei grabbed the knife and shouted asking, he just wants him to stop. Is it really not clear? The man dropped the lollipop in surprise and stopped the car. Yibei told him that he asked to stop the singing, not the car. The man looked at the fuel gauge and nervously said that the car had run out of fuel. The guy started shouting angrily that they had driven halfway, and the man was just now thinking about fuel. He told him that he had forgotten, and, unfortunately for them, there were no gas stations nearby. Yibei grabbed the man and told him to get out of the car. He would distract all the zombies towards himself. The man, sweating, asked him to give him something to eat, so at least he would die full. Yao Yu looked out the window. A zombie appeared behind the glass and opened its mouth predatorily. The girl screamed in fear, zombies were surrounding them. Yibei said displeasedly that if they were surrounded at this rate, they could die here. Then he noticed a machete next to the seat. At the same moment, he kicked the door and got out of the car. One of the monsters rushed at the guy, but he took out a knife and cut the monster's head. He smiled contentedly. Another dead man was approaching from behind. Yibei stabbed the knife directly into his head and pushed the body away with his foot. Two more were running from the side. The guy pushed one of them with his foot and struck him in the head, intercepting the knife and crushing the head of the other. The man sitting in the car was stunned by the guy's talent. He shouted that it was too cool. Yao Yu was also surprised. Yibei came up and told the man to get out of here, but he replied that he wouldn't go because he was scared. The guy grabbed him and told him to calm down. Sooner or later, he will die if he sits in the car. Let him do what Yibei tells him. The man looked at the guy. He said while they were driving, there were a lot of cars parked on the side of the road. If they were lucky, they might have some fuel left in them. He will clear the way for him and will protect him from zombies while he drains the gasoline. Yibei asked, he knows how to drain, right? He was chatting about the car all the way, he probably should know. The man nervously replied that he knew. The guy ordered Yao Yu to stay sitting here. She agreed. The man got out of the car and told the guy to wait because he was not mentally ready for this. Yibei replied that he just needed to prepare a few bottles. The man replied that the bottles had not yet run out of soda. Yibei displeasedly replied that he should simply pour everything out, and he began to kill the zombies that were approaching them. The man thought that they should have been intimidated in the store then, but who knew? At this time, Yibei dealt with monsters professionally. The man called out to him. The guy displeasedly asked why he was still standing by the car. The one who remembered that the car has a spare fuel tank. He thought to himself that the guy was unusual, and he needed to get the best out of him. Yibei cut off the head of the last monster, turned around and asked the man with a dissatisfied face, what did he say? He hesitated and timidly replied so that the young man would not be angry. He simply forgot about it out of shock. There was no need to scare him so much. Yibei shook in anger. The man waved his hand and asked him to wait a minute. He would do everything now and laughed awkwardly. Yibei told him that then it would be better to do something else and only then refuel. He thought about it and said that he wanted the man to collect something for him. He held out his hand with energy black gold, and he said that these black beads are hidden in the brains of zombies. He needs his help to extract them, every single one. The man was surprised. Yibei pierced the monster's head and showed how it should be done. There really was a small black ball inside the head. The guy took it out and showed it to the man. 
He said that it was disgusting and that he would rather sit in the car. Ibe pointed the machete at him and said that he did not require him to cut the flesh into thin pieces to fry the bacon. The man asked how he would do this if the guy took his machete. Ibe dissatisfiedly shouted for him to use his mouth. The guy will kill and the man will get. If Ibe sees that he is shirking, then the next person he will kill will be a man. He went to deal with other zombies who had already approached them. The man remained silent awkwardly. He said, zombies are so disgusting, and now to get into their brains makes him sick. He turned to the small iron spatula and said, despite the fact that it is full, they can easily bite through it, so let him protect it. Yubei looked at the man and said that he was talking too much. The man timidly extended a spatula to the zombie's head and asked himself, they shouldn't move, should they? This guy made such a precise cut, it's impressive. He stuck the spatula into the monster's head. Are their skulls really that fragile? Marvelous, he took the ball and said thoughtfully, black beads with a green glow inside. Who would have thought that there were such black beads in the human brain? Like a pearl in a shell. He asked Yubei, is this thing worth a lot of money? The guy told him to shut up and work. The man looked contentedly at the ball. He thought, this is what turns people into zombies, perhaps he should keep one for himself. The young man killed another monster. Now you can rest, he wiped the sweat from his forehead. The remaining zombies are too far away. There is no point in attracting their attention. He thought that he was already a little accustomed to his previous body, but this was not enough, he was too slow. He turned and asked the man how much he had already pulled out. The man happily showed the booty in his hands. Great harvest, he said that he had already gotten used to it. This is not an easy business. Ibe wiped the machete and told him to wash all the pearls and put them somewhere. Now they can continue on their way. The guy leaned over and looked into the cabin of the car, but saw Yao Yu lying unconscious in the heat. He rushed towards her and put his hand to her forehead. The curse is much worse this time. He bent down and opened her backpack, hoping that she remembered to take her medicine and water. He took the bottle and carefully gave the girl a drink. A man came up from behind and asked what was wrong with his sister Heatstroke. Yubei answered him displeasedly so that he should mind his own business. Let him better fill up the tank and get into the car. The girl began to look a little better. The man said that she had been sitting in the car for a long time and asked if she was feeling better. Ibe grabbed the knife and shouted that it was all because he lied about the car running out of fuel. He only delays them and if anything happens to her, Ibe will cut the man into a thousand pieces. He shouted to the men to spare him and said that he would drive the car well and would not do it again. Yaoyu opened her eyes slightly. Finally, they moved on. The man noticed that the guy was fluent with a machete and asked what his name was. Yibe replied that if he wants to meet someone, he first needs to introduce himself. He replied that his name was Zhao Han. He was the manager of a local auto repair shop. Everyone was infected. The city was filled with zombies. He had no choice but to save his own skin. His friend left the car at the auto repair shop but did not return. So now the car belongs to him. Yibe introduced himself, but before he could finish speaking, the man pressed the brake pedal with all his might. The guy hit the front seat. He shouted, again this idiot suddenly braked. Did he decide to die? The man looked ahead in horror and said that the path to the market was blocked. In front were cars covered in fire. Yao Yu woke up, Yibe addressed her, she finally woke up. The girl looked out the window. The cars were engulfed in flames. The guy said, the road to the eastern market is blocked. Perhaps she will not be able to get to her father. The girl looked at the fire and thought about dad. Shaohan said that they could get there by taking the bypass road. It will just take a little longer. He asked if they would go. Yibei thought about it and agreed, but first he would need to find better equipment. He asked Zhao Han if he knew any electrical goods or weapons stores nearby. The man thought for a couple of seconds and replied that he knew and would take him there. The car started moving. The man said that in the south of the city, there is an old man who owns a forge. He has been in this business for more than 10 years, so he has a lot of experience. Yubei noticed the presence of a forge. The man continued to say that the old man almost never leaves there, but now that the zombie virus has broken out, Zhao Han doesn't know if he's still there. As they say, a monk cannot escape from the temple, and besides, he has a lot of useful things there. He couldn't throw them all away. The man added that the old man personally made the machete that is now in Yibei's hand. The guy thought that now that he had collected enough pearls, he could create a weapon that could be used. If, of course, there is suitable equipment in the forge, he hopes that Zhao Han is not joking. 
The man continued to say how long it had been since he had seen the blacksmith. They got along well. What nostalgia. As children, they often skipped classes together and stole melons. The girl put her finger to her mouth, indicating that Yibei had fallen asleep. Zhao Han exclaimed questioningly, how could the guy fall asleep under his fiery speech? They continued driving and finally arrived. This place hasn't changed much in the last ten years. Yibei looked carefully at the pile of metal and asked, is this a forge? More like a garbage dump. Zhao Han smiled and said that the old man liked to collect all sorts of rubbish. The guy pointed the machete at the man and said, he better pray that the local blacksmith is alive, otherwise he will have to dig his own grave. Suddenly a couple of zombies appeared. Zhao Han said that before they enter, apparently they will have to restore a little order here. A crowd of zombies was approaching. Yibei asked, maybe one of them is his blacksmith? The man hesitated. The guy waved his hand and said, as always, he kills monsters, Zhao Han gets pearls. The man nodded. A voice from behind shouted to wait. It was a girl. She said that she could also help getting out of the car. Yibei replied, no need. Let him stay in the car and not get in the way. He's not going to save her. What if she suddenly loses consciousness or gets bitten by a zombie? Yao Yu replied that she was fine and would be very careful. Xiao Han told her that she was a brave girl, he would get the pearl, and she would collect it. He will take care of her and don't let her worry about it. Yibei quarreled and said that if she was bitten, he would not hesitate to stab her. The girl agreed. The guy started killing zombies. While he was dealing with them, Zhao Han asked the girl how old she was. She replied that she was 14, then the man asked what her name was, and she introduced herself. He took an interest and asked why he and his brother have different surnames, is he her cousin? Yao Yu remained silent. From a nearby building, someone was watching them through binoculars. A certain man, holding a cigarette, cursed. Then a guy entered the door and addressed the man, calling him Comrade Lo. He said that he had a message, but before he could say anything, a bullet pierced his head. The man held a gun and said dissatisfied with how many times he told him to knock. The other guy behind the door was trembling seeing the corpse of the murdered man. The man said, turning to the new one, what's going on there? The guy answered tremblingly that someone had come to the forge and started killing zombies in the area. The man replied that he had already seen it. What else could he say? The guy remained silent and added that he knew them, or rather met one of them in the northern part of the city. He's killed a lot of zombies single-handedly, and that's pretty impressive. The man took a cigarette in his mouth and thought. He turned to the girl standing next to him and told her to bring something. She took a tray with a packet of noodles and handed it to him. The man took the noodles and threw them into the guy's hands. He added that this was his reward, and that he would tell him about the guy later. The guy thanked the man. The villain looked out the window and thought that for now he could take his time and better enjoy this show. He turned to the guy and told him to take out the corpse and clean the room. Then let him tell the others that anyone who goes and gets even with these guys will receive a big reward. At this time, Yibei killed the last zombie. He asked Yao Yu how did she rummage through the corpses. Zhao Han replied that it was very simple. The girl boasted that she had mined 19 pearls. Yibei told Zhao Han to look around the outside of the house, and he would go and look around inside. The guy kicked the door, it was dark inside, and there was firewood lying near the door, and an apron and glasses on them. Yibei noticed the anvil. He said, the stove is burning, and the owner was either eaten not long ago, or he left shortly before their arrival. Then Zhao Han came in and said that there was nothing suspicious outside, and he didn't even know where the old man could run away. Yibei asked for the pearls that they collected and said to look for scrap metal outside, let him bring everything here. The guy gave him a machete and told him to be ready to repel attacks. Zhao Han asked what the guy was going to do. They came here for weapons, of which there are enough here, right? Yibei replied that next week all this would become useless and they needed more powerful weapons. The man looked at the guy and asked if he was going to forge iron. Yibei shouted at him not to be so talkative and to quickly bring him the pearls. Zhao Han ran out. He met Yao Yu and said, what an irritable guy. The girl asked what she should do. At this time, Yibei put on glasses, an apron and gloves, and lit a fire in the stove. The mechanic's first skill is forging. Using tongs, he took a piece of iron and began to beat it on the anvil with a hammer. Zhao Han came up from behind and asked the guy, does he really know how to forge? The young man ordered him to pour all the pearls into a metal container. The man poured out the beads. Yibei put them on the fire, and after a few minutes they melted and turned into a green liquid. 
Zhao Han said in surprise that it dissolves due to temperature. What an amazing effect. The guy took out a utility knife and cut his hand to pour blood into a cup of liquid. He poured the contents of the bowl onto the blade he had forged. Zhao Han looked at it with interest and said that it was like a seasoning. Yibei began to fight off the blade of the future weapon again. The knocking sound could be heard throughout the entire area. At this time, several unknown guys were standing on the stairs and talking. One of them said that this boy cuts zombies like watermelons and why Comrade Law ordered them to bring his head. The man behind him replied that if they deal with him, they will receive a bunch of supplies. The third guy happily added that it would still be possible to spend a sweet night with that girl. What could be better? The shaved man said that there must be a reason why Comrade Luo gives this boy such importance. Besides, all the zombies in the area have been killed, so the matter will be simple. They would wait overnight and attack. All the other villains agreed that this was a great idea. At this time, Yibei was cutting metal. Xiao Han stood behind and asked himself, what is his specialty? Did you really graduate from technical school? Yibei picked up the resulting blade. The man enthusiastically added that the texture of the blade is similar to lightning, it's cool. Yibei smiled and said that everything is ready. It's time for them to see what a mechanic can do. Meanwhile, Yao Yu finished setting the table for lunch. She wiped the sweat from her brow and exhaled. It's good that the oven is still working here, so they can all have a nice snack after hard work, when suddenly someone came up from behind and covered her mouth. One of the guys sent to capture Yibei told her to be quiet and that he would take her to a wonderful place. Yibei froze as if sensing something was wrong. Some time has passed. The guy was finishing making weapons. He sharpened the blade and inserted it into the handle. And now the sword for killing zombies was ready. Zhao Han looked at this with interest and said that he had only seen this in movies. Yibei stood with electric pliers and said that the final step is activation. He pressed the pliers to the blade and sparks flew. The sword glowed green. The generator switched off due to such a load on the power grid. Zhao Han was stunned. The guy took his creation in his hands and said, The forged sword of the second stage is ready. The man said it was amazing and he wanted one for himself. Suddenly there were screams. Zhao Han said, These are Yao Yu's screams. They immediately ran out of the forge. Four men were standing on the street. They were armed. And in addition, one of them had an unconscious girl on his shoulder. Yibei was angry. The shaven-headed man pointed a knife at the girl and told them to throw down their weapons and go with them to the boss, otherwise she would die. Yibei raised the sword with both hands and slammed it into the ground with all his strength. A bright green light emanated from the sword. All the villains were surprised. The green beam caught one of them and cut it in half. The guy with Yao Yu on his shoulder started running, shouting, What is this? Yibei made a swing and asked menacingly, Are they retreating? The second beam cut the metal pipe in the hands of one of the villains. Another guy shouted after the girl's kidnapper, asking where he was running away. He answered him, idiot, what else to do in such a situation? At this time, Yibei blew off the head of another freak. The kidnappers were terrified. One of them told the other it was all his fault. He should have followed the plan and not attacked the first girl he met as soon as he saw her. Now let her not let her go, otherwise no one will be saved. The man replied that he would put the girl on the ground and the beam of the sword would overtake them. And if they fail the task, then everyone will die at the hands of the boss. Then a bright beam fell next to them. Yibei was approaching, he was full of anger. Suddenly Zhao Han called out to the guy. He reported that zombies were approaching from behind. Indeed, a crowd of monsters was running straight towards them. The man shook, they ran here so quickly, as if they had been smeared with honey here. He asked Yibei what should they do. Run? The guy squeezed the hilt of his sword and waved it. The green beam killed several zombies in an instant. Xiao Han was shocked and looked at the unequal battle. It was incredible and went beyond his consciousness. Then he shouted that the villains were running away. They stole Yao Yu and we need to go after them. Yibei shouted angrily, let him not be such a fool and catch up with them while he deals with the zombies and takes the car. Xiao Han quickly got behind the wheel. He would catch them like in the old days. Hang in there, buddy Yibei. Let him leave the princess's salvation to him. The villains turned around in fear. One shouted that they were being overtaken. They quickly jumped into a bus parked next to the house. Xiao Han suddenly braked. Is this building their lair? Dusk has come. Xiao Han got out of the car and said that they were blocking the entrance with a bus and asked what to do. The villains ran out. The other two guys who were on the bus laughed evilly. One of them asked if only one had come. 
His partner replied that in this case, now is the time to deal with him. They got off the bus. The man with the knife said to Zhao Han, his car is quite good. He brought it here on purpose, and we can be grateful for that. He continued to say that if he doesn't want to become a kebab, then he should immediately undress and get out of here. The men laughed. Zhao Han pulled out a machete and said that he was not afraid of his threats because he was not a weakling. The villains rushed to run towards him. One of them laughingly said that he had killed more people than he had eaten chickens in his life. He really is looking for death. Zhao Han swung his machete and said that they were looking for her. He was about to attack when a bright green beam hit the enemies in an instant along with the bus. It was cut right through. Zhao Han noticed Yu Bei walking towards him and asked if he had already dealt with all the zombies. The guy replied that he should not stand like a pillar. They are going to save Yao Yu. Let him follow him. The man nodded. Yu Bei concentratedly struck the bus. A bright green explosion followed. They entered the territory of the building where enemies were already hiding. One of the men threw a knife at Yu Bei, but before it could reach the target, he collided with the blade of the sword. The guy hit back. The green beam overtook the attacker in an instant. Zhao Han looked to the side and asked, he doesn't really need his help, right? The other two villains started throwing petrol bottles. But the guy calmly swung his sword in their direction, and they were immediately struck down by a powerful blow. Suddenly a shot rang out. The bullet almost hit the guy's head. The man stood on the balcony of the building and spoke brilliantly, truly impressive. He saw everything Yubei did. In this complete natural disaster, there is such a powerful person as a guy. He's really amazed. The man asked if Yubei would like to come up and have a drink with him. The guy looked at the man threateningly. He continued to say that he was very sincere with people, especially someone as talented as the young man. If he needs something, then let him say it, and he will take care to satisfy his request. Yibei swung his sword. Suddenly, the man pointed a gun at Yao Yu's head and added that the guy should not be so rash. They were hospitable to his little sister, weren't they? She's probably so tired that she's sleeping soundly now. He continued to say that they were kind and respectful, and there was no point in undermining their good intentions. He knows the power of Yi Bei's weapon and will not be surprised if it can sweep them all away. But which will be faster, his sword or his gun? Yi Bei remained silent. Xiao Han asked quietly, what will they do? Yao Yu is in their hands and the villain also has a gun. Yi Bei laughed and said that he was working on a big project and was worried that there would be no one to help. If the man agreed to gather all his people and let him dispose of them, then the young man would go up to him. The villain asked again, so all the people. He laughed and spread his arms to the sides, saying, He knew that Yi Bei was a great man. They will greet him in the most solemn manner. Zhao Han turned to the guy and asked, Has his friend gone crazy? Will they have to deal with everyone at once? Plus, they have pistols. Yi Bei turned around and replied that if a man doesn't want to, he doesn't have to go. Zhao Han asked again, Is the guy saying this now? He doesn't want to get into this troubled water. He'll leave anyway, just don't let him get upset. Yi Bei said, What an annoying guy. The villain's three minions bowed and led him inside the building. After a while, Yi Bei stood in front of a crowd of armed bandits. The man greeted him and asked if there were enough people here. All the young and strong guys within a 15-kilometer radius gathered here. He introduced himself as their leader, Luo Ziang, and asked the guy's name. After all, what does he want from them? The young man replied that his name was Yi Bei, and he remembered Luo Ziang. He asked if he knew how this zombie disaster happened. Liu Ziang asked, is he saying that he knows him and thinks he knows the cause of the zombie virus outbreak? Yi Bei answered confidently, yes, he knew very well about the spread of viruses and began stocking up on supplies in advance. Now he should be making plans to form a gang of shadow dragons, right? Liu Ziang was impressed. He said that he had only told a few about the shadow dragons and asked how Yi Bei knew about them. He is becoming more and more interesting. Yi Bei showed the pearl and asked, is this more interesting? The man laughed and said that the guy was right. Then why should they chatter in vain? Let him post what he knows. Yi Bei grinned and said that a man should know several versions about the spread of the zombie virus. The first says that the virus appeared as a result of the failure of foreign research on bacteria and through migratory birds and insects it spread throughout the world. The second version is that this is a biological weapon. There is no more convenient means of waging war than allowing the enemy to self-destruct but the situation got out of control. The third version is even more absurd, extraterrestrial origin. A meteorite containing a zombie virus fell to the ground. 
The meteorite burned in the atmosphere, crumbled into particles, which then penetrated the human body, thereby making it a carrier of the virus. Ibei asked, surely he had heard one of these versions before returning from the city to the countryside to gather his gang. Luo Xiang replied that all the words are true, and he really knows one little secret about the zombie virus. He took out two pearls and continued to say that after much thought, he still did not understand how these zombie skull pearls could be used. Luo Xiang asked Jibei if his sword and his major project were related to this. Perhaps he could tell us more about the method of using these pearls. The guy replied that first he would have to prepare the props. The man said that it was not a problem, but first he should look at the sword. He added that Yao Yu is still here, and they don't want anything to happen to her. Yibei frowned and handed the sword to the strong man. But he couldn't hold it in his hands and told Luo Xiang that the sword was very heavy. He said that today there are a lot of surprises. Well, let the guy start his speech. Yibei said that the Day of Judgment came precisely because of the outbreak of the zombie virus. People immediately became infected, and this black pearl formed in their brain. These pearls are called energy black gold, and over time it accumulates energy in the dead body. Energetic black gold adapts well to flesh and metal, and can be used to create powerful weapons. Luo Xiang said that the guy said black gold adapts to flesh and metal. Is it possible to make some kind of elixir of immortality from it? Yibei chuckled and said that some tried to eat it, but most turned into zombies. Luo Xiang asked, is it the majority? What happened to the others, he would like to see them. The guy suggested looking at it first, he would show it only once. Step 1 Activation Yibei took two metal rods and leaned it against the funnel. Green flashes of current surrounded the guy. The generators broke down due to the load on the power grid, which caused the lights to go out. Everyone started making noise asking what happened. Has the electricity gone out? Luo Zhang asked, did this energy gold cause an electromagnetic pulse? Is it possible? Ibei grabbed the sword and struck at the man, but he managed to dodge. He shouted, idiot, is he kidding him? Luo Xiang fired his pistol twice. But Yibei quickly reacted and dodged, the bullets missed. The guy grabbed the sword more conveniently and quickly cut the enemy. The wounded man said that he was careless. The leader of the gang of Shadow Dragons has come to an end. When he learned about the uses of black gold, he forced the Shadow Dragons to help him in the research and development of various weapons from this material, and subsequently began to dominate this topic, even without considering the state army. Within the limits of his power, there was only violence, slavery, and murder. None of this was left aside. Yubei said, before they succeed, he must completely destroy them, every single one of them. The guy killed all the guys in the gang. There were explosions. Yibei looked at Yao Yu and thought that he had probably already become a butcher, but he couldn't let her witness everything that would happen. The guy put his hand to the sleeping girl's face and thought how he wanted her to realize the cruelty of the apocalypse, but did not want her to be drawn into it. Then the door opened slightly and Yibei pulled out his sword, preparing to attack. Xiao Han walked out the door and asked, looking at the pile of corpses, the guy must be done here. The guy raised Luo Xiang's pistol and replied that he had fulfilled the purpose for which he came here. Xiao Han asked, did they really do all this for the gun? He thought that they had come here to save the girl. He was even moved. Yibei put the pistol in his belt and said, small arms are extremely rare in this area, and there are many opportunities to improve it. Xiao Han asked, what can this gun be transformed into? Maybe the guy will make it electromagnetic or laser. Yibei remained silent. The man continued to talk, by the way, pretending that he allowed him to leave, and saying before that to put pearls in the generator was a brilliant idea. Xiao Han didn't expect that one such small bead could blow up an entire generator. It was cool. Suddenly, one of the dead began to stir. Yibei immediately took out his gun and took aim. Assistant Luo Xiang covered her head with her hands and screamed not to be killed. Xiao Han asked, what did such a sweet girl forget in this place? She answered, trembling, that she was caught and brought here by Luo Xiang. Every day he used her like some kind of slave, humiliated and tortured her. She asked for her life to be spared. Yibei asked if she knew where the supply warehouse was. The girl said she would take them there. Zhao Han asked, where did she come from? The girl answered, her house was in the western region of Anxi. The man asked if her family was there. She replied that there was only a sister, but she disappeared when this disaster happened. Then she suddenly stopped at a non-working elevator. Zhao Han said that the elevator was de-energized and it would not be possible to use it. The girl said, but the storage room is on the sixth floor. Yibei asked the man to take Yao Yu and find a room. 
while he and the girl went up the stairs. At this time in the hall, one of Luo Xiang's henchmen woke up. He could not crawl out from under the corpse of his comrade and asked for help. He saw the dead boss. Suddenly, the guy noticed a pearl lying on the floor. He took it and said, This is energetic black gold. The memory of Yi Bei and his boss's conversation was in his mind. The guy cringed and swallowed it. Pain pierced his whole body. He screamed heart-rendingly. The thunderstorm has begun. Xiao Han looked out the window inside. Yao Yu opened her eyes, sat up on the bed and asked Xiao Han. The man walked up to the bed and waved to the girl, asking if she had woken up yet. Yao Yu asked where they were. The man explained that she was kidnapped by bandits and dragged here, but her friend Yi Bei beat everyone up. The girl asked in fear bandits, Is buddy Yi Bei okay? The door opened and a guy walked in. He noticed that Yao Yu had woken up. She happily asked him if he was okay. Zhao Han asked if he found any useful things upstairs. Yi Bei replied that there was a lot of useful stuff there, but he couldn't take it all alone. They'd look tomorrow. Zhao Han asked what happened to the girl who took him to the storeroom. The guy replied that he didn't know. Maybe she ran away while he was searching the room. The man kept asking if she had really run away. But there's a thunderstorm outside. Yi Bei lay down on the bed and said he didn't care what happened to her. He was tired, let them get some sleep first, and then return to this issue. The young man asked Zhao Han to go downstairs and block the door so that the zombies could not get through. The man exclaimed he should do this again. Yao Yu said, let Yi Bei rest and she will help him. Zhao Han responded touchingly how caring she is, he was so touched. The thunderstorm did not stop. At the same time in the apartment, Lai Ryuaxi was taking a shower. Suddenly the door opened and an unknown man asked if she had finished. The girl answered with fear, what is he doing? Let him get out of here. The man replied that this was his house, how could she drive him away? He only asked if she had finished taking a shower so that they could finally move on to the next activity. She angrily answered him asking, so what was his goal? The young man laughed and asked why not. Who else could shelter a woman who had been wandering the streets for several days? He's glad to see that she hasn't mutated during this time. He generously let her into his home, but free cheese only comes in a mousetrap, right? The man tried to open the door to the shower, saying that it seemed she had nothing more to offer him except her body. Come on, together they can survive this apocalypse. Lai Ryuaxi screamed for help. The man answered her, there is a thunderstorm outside, no one will hear her screams. Of course, only if she doesn't hope to be saved from zombies. Suddenly, they heard a roar. The guy ran out of the shower with a knife in his hand, cursing. For a moment, she turned pale, afraid of something. The girl heard his screams. She asked what was happening and carefully looked out from behind the wall. Her eyes opened wide. The huge monster pinned the man to the wall, impaling him with its arm. Then he forcefully threw the corpse into the wall where the girl stood. She screamed when she saw the ugly monster that he was a monster. The guy fell and began to say that he was not a monster. Why did he change so much? He screamed and hit the floor. Lai Ryuaxi asked in amazement, what is he? The monster replied that he had been shot and was dying. Before his death, he ate energy black gold, and afterward it was as if he had turned inside out. The girl asked, so he was a man and ate black gold. The monster said that this is what the guy who introduced himself as Yi Bei called it. He got it from a zombie and had nothing to lose, so he decided to give it a try, thinking it would save his life. Lai Ruoxi asked again, did he say Yi Bei? Does he know him? She grabbed him by the hair and began asking him an endless stream of questions. The monster replied that the guy had recently arrived in Shinnan, and with some strange energy sword he cut everyone in the building, he should not have gone far. The girl demanded that he take her there, she would tear him to pieces. The monster said, this is impossible. He's too strong, they can't defeat him. Does she have old scores with him? Lai Ruoxi clenched her teeth. It was because of him that she was now wandering from place to place, looking for somewhere to hide. She hates him with all her heart. She looked at the impressive size of the monster and said, isn't he strong? After all, I just killed this freak in a second. The man looked at the hand and said that he didn't know how it happened. There seemed to be some kind of energy in his body, but he couldn't control it. He asked if she was afraid of him. The girl laughed loudly and added that she thought he was very strong. But she just needs him to help her deal with Yi Bei. She put his hand on her body and said, in return she will do whatever he wants. The monster asked again, is this true? He picked up the girl and shouted that he liked her. He would help her kill the guy. Lai Ryuaxi was pleased. Suddenly, the monster screamed. She asked what happened to him. The monster grabbed its head in a heart-rending scream. 
The rain stopped, and the main characters were about to leave the mansion. Yibei put on his gloves and fastened his holster. Zhao Han was sorting out the boxes and saying he thought there was something useful here, but here there were only instant noodles, canned food and crackers, and also a bunch of cigarettes and wine. Yibei put the sword behind his back and said to finish here. They went downstairs with supplies, Zhao Han said. He thought that all those guys had pistols, who knew that only their boss Luo Ziang had one. Fortunately, they have a lot of supplies, enough for a month. Suddenly he shouted, what happened to his car? Was there hail last night or a meteorite? Zhao Han's car was crushed. While he was complaining, Yi Bei looked at the dents coming from the car. Was it raining yesterday? Or is this the aftermath of the battle? He thought for a moment, then asked the man to step away from the car. The guy pulled out a sword and swung it over the dented roof and threw the iron aside. Zhao Han said, this is now a convertible. He got behind the wheel and said with relief that the engine was working. Where should they go now? Looking for Yao Yu's father. Yi Bei answered in the affirmative and they set off. Xiao Han said smiling that driving a convertible is cool, but now you need to avoid zombies. With such a machine, you won't be able to shoot them down like before. Suddenly, several zombies appeared, Xiao Han exclaimed in puzzlement. A huge number was approaching from the direction of the school, and schoolchildren were running ahead, shouting for help. Yi Bei recognized them as his classmates and was surprised that they were still alive. One of the girls tripped and fell, saying that she could no longer walk, and the zombies were getting closer. Suddenly, a green bean cut through the crowd of monsters. It was Yi Bei's sword attack. The guys looked around questioningly. They couldn't believe their eyes when they saw their classmate. He approached them and greeted them and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. The schoolchildren breathed a sigh of relief. One of the girls thanked the guy. The blonde guy said that Yi Bei had a powerful sword and asked where he found it. The young man replied that he had traveled to the south of the city and asked if they had finally decided to run away from school. Where are you planning to go? His classmate said that after they left school, they heard about an island in the center of the lake where survivors had set up camp. Now they want to get there, but the road is not easy. Some have already been bitten by zombies. The other guy exclaimed, Yi Bei has a car. Just great. Let him give them a lift. The schoolgirl with the bob asked pleadingly to give them food because they had not eaten since yesterday. They will be grateful if he shares at least a little with them. Yao Yu sat in the car and discussed the situation with Zhao Han. It looks like Yi Bei's classmates are in trouble. The man replied that they looked at his car like that. They definitely liked it. Of course, even in this state, it remains beautiful. Yi Bei shouted for them to stop asking. There are too many of them. There is not enough gas in the car and they won't fit. They will share food but let the school children help with some things first. They agreed immediately. The guy shouted to Zhao Han, let him explain what to do. The man stood up and said, this is his finest hour. Yu Bei said that he would deal with the zombies and they would clean them out. The teenagers asked again, what will they clean out? Zhao Han took the small spatula and told them to look at it and remember it. He pierced the head of one of the monsters, pulled out a pearl from there and said, you need to pull out things like this. The guys turned pale. One of the girls lost consciousness. Yao Yu held the bead and told the guys not to be afraid. Zombie skulls are fragile, so getting the pearls is not at all difficult. The blonde guy thought sympathetically, poor girl. What did she have to go through? Xiao Han handed out improvised means to the schoolchildren and just be careful so that they don't get bitten by zombies. One of the guys wondered why Yi Bei needed these things. Do monsters really have pearls in their brains? Everyone was busy. Two hours later, Xiao Han boasted a full bag of energy black gold. He turned to the guys and said that they were just monsters. Yu Bei asked for food to be distributed as they agreed. The man exclaimed asking why the guy decided to give them his food without asking for an opinion. The schoolchildren looked at Zhao Han ingratiatingly. He thought that this would hurt his soul. How can you even share food with someone? He can eat it himself. Suddenly from the sky, a huge monster landed right on the car. Everyone looked up and was amazed. The monster let out a roar. Yi Bei found out what it was, an anomalous mutation, but how could it appear here? He shouted for everyone to run away. The monster tried to hit the guy, but he deftly turned away. Yi Bei pulled out his sword and swung it, but unfortunately it didn't hit the monster. He jumped back when suddenly Lai Ryuaxi came out, clapping her hands and smiling, and said she finally managed to find Yi Bei. The guy was surprised to see her. His classmates began to ask in amazement how she survived. Lai Ryuaxi said that she only has one goal, to see the guy die. 
She pointed her finger at Yi Bei and ordered the creature to deal with him. The young man gritted his teeth and thought, Why is this an unpleasant woman with this monster? The monster rushed to attack. Yi Bei pulled out his sword and prepared to strike back. Yao Yu and Zhao Han were scared. Suddenly the fireball collided with the asphalt, right between the opponents. Everyone wondered what it was and looked at the house. Another fire monster was sitting there. At this time on the boat, an unknown man lit a cigarette and said enough, zombies cannot swim or fly, so there is no place safer than the center of the lake. Another man said politely, holding a bottle of wine in his hands, that his master is very wise. The man with the cigarette said, later they will again take supplies from some ship, so they can constantly stay on the water. Then there was an explosion on one of the boats. The men became alarmed, asking what was happening. Explosion. A fiery figure appeared in the sky. The men screamed, asking what it was. Then came a fiery flash. And then a fiery creature appeared on the roof of the house. Everyone hid behind the trees, wondering what it could be. eBay thought in confusion, another anomalous, and a fiery one at that. Lyriuxi thought this monster was all on fire. She turned to her henchman. Was it his friend who was sitting on the roof now? The monster replied that he did not know him. Meanwhile, the fiery monster jumped and knocked the first one to the ground. Lyriuxi and Yibei did not understand what was happening. The monster asked who he was. Why did you attack him? The fiery essence was silent. The monster managed to kick him away. While they were fighting, they hit Zhao Han's car, he said, crying. What about his food? Yibei shouted that it doesn't matter, he needs to leave. The school children, Yao Yu and Zhao Han, ran away. Lai Ryuaxi gritted her teeth and said, Idiot, Yibei is leaving, why is he messing around? The monster answered her that he was busy with the fiery creature, he couldn't keep up with everyone. It attacked, the fireball almost hit Yao Yu, but she was saved by Yibei. The burning wall cut him off with the girl and Zhao Han from the others. The school children were confused when suddenly the guy shouted for them to find a place where they could hide. Zhao Han breathed heavily and asked where should they run. Yibei saw the underground parking and suggested going down there to wait. The monster asked the fiery creature if he could talk. Did he also eat the black pearl to become like this? The fire monster shook, grabbed its head with its hands and screamed that it didn't want to eat it. It remembered the unknown people who desecrated its body and forced it to eat these black pearls. They've gone crazy, a bunch of crazy people. The fire monster stood up and shouted that it would incinerate them all. Lyriuxi's henchman said that he understood what he had to do. The girl asked, are they finished? At this rate, will they start kissing now? She folded her hands on her chest and said, maybe the monster will move and go find Yibei while he is looking for a place to hide. He told her not to worry, he could handle it quickly because he could still smell it and could find it. The fiery creature asked who they were looking for. The monster replied that this is a man named Yibei, he seems to understand black gold. Perhaps he may know a way to return them to human form. The fiery creature asked if he could return it, then it will go with him. At this time, Zhao Han asked, Buddy Yibei, it seems it has already become quiet outside, maybe they left? Yibei showed to be quieter, they did not stop running. Suddenly a car landed next to them. They looked back, it was a monster, he laughed and said that he had finally found them. It seems they aren't finished. He stood opposite them and turned to Yibei before killing the guy. He needed him to tell all the secrets of black gold, and this time without his tricks. Yibei frowned and ordered Zhao Han to take Yao Yu away from here. He would detain the monster. The man agreed, but before they had time to escape, a fiery creature came out from around the corner. Zhao Han turned to the guy. They were squeezed from all sides. Lai Ryuaxi laughed. She sat in the back of the car and said, Yibei will not be able to escape from her. Now two mutants want him dead, so let him be willing to die. Yibei became angry looking at the girl. He turned to his comrades, let them hide and move as far away from him as possible. Lai Ryuaxi ordered the mutants to kill the guy. One of them immediately rushed to attack. Yibei pulled out his sword and stood in a fighting position. The monster struck, but the guy ducked down, pulled out a pistol and shot Lai Ryuaxi in the shoulder. She screamed heart-rendingly in pain. The monster turned around in response to the scream. Yibei shot several more times, but the monster put his hand up and told the guy not to harm her. Yibei swung his sword, but the green beam did not have time to reach the enemies. Suddenly a fiery monster attacked from behind. It tried to hit the guy, but he managed to dodge. It doused Yibei with fire. Yao Yu, who was watching the battle, grabbed a small hatchet and threw it at the mutant. This attracted his attention to her. Zhao Han asked in fear what she was doing. 
Yibei managed to attack from behind, he hit the pipe above the monster. The flow of water extinguished the flame, Yibei cut off the enemy's hand, he screamed. The guy swung again, but missed the target, and the fiery creature ran away to the side. Another mutant was sitting to the side with Lai Ryuoxi in his arms. He said that Yibei was merciless, and he would get even with him next time the monsters disappeared. The young man tiredly knelt down. Yao Yu ran up to him and asked worriedly, is he injured? Yibei said, facing two anomalous people at the same time was something he never expected. Zhao Han asked, does he know where they came from? The guy remained silent and then added, an anomaly is a mutated person as a result of consuming black gold. In most cases, those who ate it become zombies, and only with a zero. One percent chance can one merge with black gold and turn into an anomaly with enormous powers. In addition, people like these who have retained consciousness are even rarer. Xiao Han asked how Yibei knew all this. The guy replied that he would tell me later, but now he needed to figure out where to go. They walked out of the underground parking lot, Zhao Han exclaimed in frustration, his car, his food, he must come back and check it out. Yibei thought, this other world does not disappear the feeling that the day of judgment is about to come. And before the worst happens, he must make every effort to change at least something. Rain started. They stood by the car, Zhao Han said, it's all over, his baby can't be helped. He pulled the bag out of the car, all that remains is to pick up things and food. He said with a sigh, it was a pity that the exit from the underground parking was blocked, because there were so many good cars there. Xiao Han handed them green raincoats and said that they could use them because there were no umbrellas. Are they now looking for a place where they can hide from the rain? Or will they still look for a car to continue the journey? Yao Yu thought about it, Yibei asked her, is there something wrong? She replied that she had already been to this place. Her dad's old friend lived nearby. He sometimes took her with him so that she could play here. It's not far here, you need to go straight towards the mountains. Xiao Han asked, is her dad's friend? What kind of person is this? Is he even alive? Yao Yu replied that he is a little strange, but she hopes that he is good. He has a big house with high walls, she spread her palms, zombies won't get inside. And he also has a lot of computers. Xiao Han clarified, there are a lot of computers, does he have a computer club? They could use a supermarket better than this. Yibei turned to the girl, they will go and look. She will show the way. Maybe her dad will be there too. Yao Yu agreed. Several zombies were approaching them. Xiao Han noticed this and shouted, They are about to be attacked. Yibei took out his sword. Then they will advance with battle. At this time, one of the mutants killed the zombie and extracted a pearl from his head, saying that this black gold should be enough. He jumped onto the roof of the building and disappeared. There was a fire monster sitting in the apartment. The mutant entered through the window and called Lai Ryuoxi. She was lying in a room with wounds on her body. The mutant approached her and said that he had brought the black gold that she asked for. The girl asked to give her everything. The monster asked if she was sure that she wanted to eat everything. Lai Ryuoxi screamed at him to give up everything and go out. The mutant obediently came out. The fire monster asked if the girl had eaten black gold. He replied that she doubted it. The fire monster said that he saw how others were forced to eat these black pearls. The consequences were terrible. He didn't die, but he became like this. Another mutant said that he did not want Lai Ryuoxi to die. The fire monster replied that although he cauterized the wounds, without special treatment, the girl would die. The second mutant said, is there really nothing left to do but eat black gold? It will be great if she successfully undergoes the mutation and becomes like them. You will no longer need to be afraid of zombies, no one. The fiery mutant said with delight, kill whoever you want, take revenge. Another replied that people like Yibei remain, and the hands of the second mutant do not regenerate. He replied that the guy was strong, and his weapon was capable of knocking down his flames. The second monster replied that they must join forces and figure out how to cope with it. They will torture him, he will tell him the secret of black gold, and so they will find a way to regain his human appearance. The fire monster agreed and introduced himself as Zhubo. The other mutant called himself Wang Sheng, and they shook hands in honor of their acquaintance. At this time, Yibei cut another zombie in half and caught his breath heavily. Xiao Han became worried and asked if he was okay. The guy is terribly pale, maybe they should find a place to rest first. Yibei ignored these words and said that he was fine, then asked Yao Yu how far is it to her father's friend's house. She pointed her hand at the tunnel, they will go through it, climb the slope, and here they are. But there was too much water in the tunnel, it seemed deep. Maybe the drain system is clogged. 
Yibei gritted his teeth and looked to the side. He said that there were wooden planks there, Yao Yu would sit on it, and they would push her forward. The girl climbed onto the board, the guy held it, and Zhao Han walked behind with things. He said that the tunnel was dark and scary. There aren't any zombies here who can dive, are there? Yao Yu turned around and said worriedly, Buddy Yibei. The guy replied that there was still a little time left, and then lost consciousness. He plunged into the water amid the girl's screams. The rain continued to pour. Wang Shang noticed this. Zhu Bo added that even the water does not drain from the roads. The mutant came to the door and said that he wanted to discuss something with Lai Ryuaxi. He entered the room and saw her sitting on her knees and shaking, enveloped in a purple glow. Wang Shang exclaimed her name, the girl screamed, her eyes glowed green, and veins appeared on her body. Zhu Bo came in and asked what is it. There was a purple explosion. Everything was dark. The girl looked at the torture. She turned to Yi Bei and asked where his colleague was hiding. Let him answer. The guy spat and said, stupid, she better stay away from him. Lai Ryuaxi said that Yi Bei does not appreciate good treatment. His head was pushed under the water. He screamed and everything went dark again. The guy woke up and saw a white ceiling above him. He stood up. It was clear that he was having a hard time. Yao Yu was lying on the bed. She opened her eyes and said joyfully, Yi Bei's friend woke up. The guy smiled and asked, Is this really it? The girl replied, This is the house of an old friend of her dad. Zhao Han entered the room with a tray in his hands, he said. He finally woke up. He lay in bed the whole day. Yi Bei asked him why he was still here. The man asked him not to be so cold, yet they dragged him here with all their might. The guy asked how they managed, despite such strong wind and rain. An unfamiliar voice replied that he also did not understand how they got here. An elderly man appeared from the door, he said. A student, an overweight man, and a girl somehow managed to get past the horde of zombies. He would never have believed this if he had not seen it with his own eyes. Yao Yu exclaimed, Grandpa Zhang. She said when Yi Bei's friend lost consciousness, they pulled him out of the water but didn't know what to do. Luckily, Grandpa Zhang spotted them through his CCTV. He recognized the girl and came to pick them up. Thanks to him, they were able to get here. Yi Bei asked, Did he see everything? The elderly man replied, Of course he saw how the guy destroyed those zombies as if he were chopping vegetables. It was really surprising. Where did you get such a weapon? Yibei began to get out of bed, saying that he was grateful for his salvation, but he could not tell anything about his weapon. Please let him return it as soon as possible. The guy didn't have time to finish and fell. Yao Yu rushed towards him. Grandfather said, It seems that swinging this sword took a lot of strength. He added that he completely forgot to introduce himself. His name is Zhang Han, but they can address him as Dr. Zhang. The man smiled good-naturedly and spread his arms. This is his research institute, at least since the outbreak of the zombie virus. This is convenient, because besides, he lives here. Yibei said the man's name, trying to remember something. Suddenly it dawned on him, Dr. Zhang Han. This is the famous scientist who studied zombies. He was the first to study and name energetic black gold. For a mechanic, he is like a sage sent down, and here he is standing right in front of him. Yibei asked nervously, is he really Dr. Zhang Han? The man laughed and said he was ashamed to admit, but he gave himself this doctorate degree. The man only works part-time at this institute. Yibei thought, maybe it's just similar names and he shouldn't have been happy. Dr. Zhang added with a smile that his interest in the guy's weapons was very real. Let him allow this to be studied for the sake of the future of humanity. Yibei thought, this could be considered a test. It would be great if he really is the Dr. Zhang Han he knows. The guy agreed, but on one condition. The man became very curious. Yibei said, a living zombie, causing the doctor's eyes to widen. They went down, the grandfather led the guy to the weapon. He just scanned it and found something, he didn't do anything else with it. They approached the table where the sword lay. Yibei took it in his hand, the doctor exclaimed, really only he can lift it so easily. And he almost tore off his back while dragging him here. Yibei looked around and noted that the man's working conditions were not bad. Using all this equipment, he will surely be able to create another powerful weapon. The doctor asked in shock, create a weapon. Did the guy really make his own? Yibei quite confirmed. Zhang Han's eyes lit up and said that it was wonderful and he should know how to do it. The guy categorically answered no, the creation process will remain a secret, otherwise he will not catch zombies for research. The man jumped up and down impatiently, mocking the old man. The guy told him to bring him something tasty every day and he'll think about it. Zhang Han jokingly called him an impudent person. 
Two photos were opened on the computer according to the information. The first photo was of Yu Bei, and it talked about his age and occupation. In the second photo there was Zhao Han, but instead of any information about him, there was a notification that such a person could not be found. It was raining again, and zombies were moving through the streets. Yao Yu was sitting behind the video surveillance system, quickly typing something on the keyboard. Then the doctor came up and brought two mugs of hot coffee, he exclaimed when he saw the girl. Yao Yu replied that she wanted to do everything in her power. The man asked, is she looking outside for survivors? It is commendable. Zhang Han sighed, there was no news from her father. His CCTV system only covers the coastal area, which is infested with zombies. The girl smiled and told the doctor that he was good, just like her dad. He would be fine. The doctor laughed, leaned towards Yao Yu and whispered, Is everything okay with the two who accompanied her all the time? That student does not seem like an ordinary person at all. He managed to master such high technology at such a young age. And besides, he has the kind of evil look that murderers only have. The man continued talking and mentioned a fat guy. Of course, he looks quite ordinary but you can really feel that he has some kind of secret. Zhao Han came up from behind and exclaimed, turning to the doctor, it's not nice to discuss people behind their backs. He thinks that Zhang Han is the strangest one here. Such a large research center, and it's the only one here. There is a helipad on the roof, and on the floors below, there is a car park, fuel tanks, and a field of solar panels. There are also several large catering units, compartments with clothes, and there are simply mountains of material resources, food, and everything necessary for life. He is the most suspicious person here. The doctor remained silent, and then shouted that Zhao Han knew nothing. He had a premonition that the Day of Judgment was about to come, so he prepared in advance. But each of them continues to take him for an idiot and a madman. He continued to shout, they eat his food, live in his house, and aren't they ashamed to accuse him of something? His goal is the salvation of all humanity. Zhao Han shouted in anger, all of humanity. The doctor has hacked cameras all over the coastal region and is unceremoniously interfering in other people's lives, convenient right. Zhang Han replied, if not for these cameras, who would have saved them? They would have continued arguing if Yao Yu had not intervened and asked them to stop quarreling. Then something stuck into Zhao Han's neck, he turned back questioningly. It was Yi Bei, he asked not to move. The guy drew blood and pulled out a syringe. Zhao Han asked why he injected him. The guy replied that he needed to take some blood. The first wave of zombie mutation would begin very soon. They didn't have much time left. He went to the door, continuing to talk about new disasters. They must be prepared. Dr. Zhang Han asked, do zombies really mutate? At this time, schoolchildren were hiding on one of the buildings. One of them looked at the crowd of zombies and said that they were surrounded. There was nowhere else to run. The guys excitedly said that the roads were flooded. What should they do? Next to them, another guy was crying, bending over the body of a long-haired girl. One of them said, Yibei is also unknown where, and there is no food in this building. They will all die here. Then the guy said that there was another option and showed black pearls. Everyone exclaimed in surprise. He added that he stole them when he helped Yibei, before that he heard one of the mutants growl that he became like this after eating one pearl. Maybe he can do? His classmate exclaimed, does he really want to eat this? Feng replied, if they have the strength of these monsters, they will be able to break through the encirclement and stay alive. Then one of the guys pointed to the side and excitedly asked what was there. The guys turned around and saw a purple tornado. At this time, at the doctor's house, Yibei was busy making something. As Zhao Han said, no one has any idea what he is messing with there. The doctor replied that the guy wanted to create new equipment that would protect against mutants. Will all zombies become like those two black-spiked, fire-breathing monsters they encountered? Zhao Han replied that he didn't know, but if this happened, it would really be the end for them. The doctor doesn't even have a decent weapon. How can you resist them? He replied that the guy was out of his mind. He was trying to create a refuge, not a fortress. Why were there weapons here? The guy objected that shelter without weapons is like meat on a cutting board. Then Yao Yu came running. She called Dr. Zhang Han. She screamed that she saw her dad on one of the cameras. They all ran to the CCTV. Zhao Han asked again, did she see him on the cameras? The doctor said that means he is already in the coastal area. Yao Yu said that she saved the recording. The monitor showed that her father was standing among the zombies and they were not attacking him. The doctor exclaimed for them to look at the movements. Was he turned into a zombie? But why don't they attack him? Yao Yu covered her mouth with her hands. Her father looked back and disappeared between the houses. Yao Yu cried. 
Zhao Han said, trying to cheer up the girl, although they have no idea how he manages to avoid the attention of zombies, but at least they know that he is alive. The girl wiped her tears. The doctor reasoned out loud, looking at his appearance, it was very likely that he hung himself with the remains of zombies and applied their blood to himself. So it turns out that this allows you to successfully hide from them. Do zombies really rely on their sense of smell when they attack? This is definitely something to look into. Yao Yu looked at the doctor sadly. He apologized, calling it all a bad habit. And he said that he perfectly understood her desire to save her father, but the weather was really bad, it was raining non-stop. The tunnel that leads to the west is now flooded, and it is impossible to travel through it. The girl bowed her head inside. Xiao Han said, how about contacting eBay? Maybe he's already made some cool gear. Yao Yu agreed. They went to the guy, but he decisively answered no, he was not finished yet, and there was no need to rush in this matter. He said not to be distracted unless they brought him food. Yao Yu stood there giving up. Then Zhao Han intervened in the conversation and objected by asking, why doesn't the guy slow down? There is no help or consolation from him. Yibei asked if he wanted to go help himself. Zhao Han looked at him questioningly. A few minutes later, a new weapon lay in front of him. The man admired this. Yibei said that he added his blood to these two types of weapons so that now he can use it. The man grabbed the sword and was able to lift it easily. Yibei said, when he swings, let him provide the power that fills the weapon, then it will be easier and more convenient to use it. This power must be carefully controlled, otherwise he will easily lose his own. Zhao Han smiled from ear to ear and said that he would be attentive. He took the gun and asked if the guy had altered the one he had taken. Yibei nodded and continued to give instructions on use. Before making a shot, you must first turn on the power source, allow the energy to accumulate in the gun channel, and then immediately shoot. The energy will shoot out along with the bullet. He added that although there is plenty of power, the bullets are limited, so you need to aim and shoot. Xiao Han licked his lips and said that this is a real electromagnetic gun. He grabbed his weapon and ran to train. He ran out into the street, raised his pistol and said, One shot into the soul. After these words, a bright green beam pierced the sky. Xiao Han said that he was now incredibly cool and laughed out loud. He activated the sword and added that this blade could really cut anything. Dr. Zhang Han watched the man's actions and angrily told him to stop and not wave his sword in front of the entrance to the laboratory complex. Xiao Han shouted that he cannot be defeated. He put on his rubber boots, put on his raincoat and shouted, No matter the zombies or abnormals, let them come. Let them watch him kill zombies one by one. He turned to Yao Yu, saying that he would definitely return her dad safe and sound. Let her just wait with Dr. Zhang Han. Yao Yu said embarrassedly, Will he be okay? The doctor replied that he didn't care, but it all depended on how long he would show off. Zhao Han knocked on the camera and asked if he could be heard. The doctor told him that the road to the western region was flooded and would have to be bypassed only through the western mountains. There are no cameras on the mountainous road, and there are many zombies there. Zhang Han once again reminded that there is no need to act rashly. Zhao Han called him names and said that he was tired of him. It would be better to exchange with Yao Yu. He went down the slope and saw a crowd of zombies. He asked, are they already climbing here? The man told himself not to be afraid. He had in his hand an artifact that was created by his friend Yibei. He lunged forward, the beam cutting through several zombies. Zhao Han said contently that he was strong, let them attack again. Then he looked to the side. A purple tornado was visible in the distance. He asked what the hell this was. The rain still did not subside. Zhao Han continued to kill zombies, having finished with everyone. He took the walkie-talkie and said whether the doctor and Yao Yu could see that the rain was getting heavier, and in the west it looked like there was some kind of tornado. Zhang Han replied, The storm is really strong and the camera's visibility is limited. But from what can be seen, it's six points dangerous, he said to come back. Zhao Han said annoyedly, Even good equipment cannot defeat the Lord of Heaven. He turned to Yao Yu, saying that he was very sorry but he would have to wait until the weather got better. Only then would he be able to go save her dad. Zhang Han turned to the girl. Her dad was always lucky. If he managed to escape from the zombies, then the storm was not a hindrance to him. Yao Yu agreed. Zhao Han approached the gate. A red lamp lit up in the building. The doctor asked in fear, is there a zombie trailing after him? The guy replied that he had already dealt with him because he first wanted to save Yao Yu's dad, but since this opportunity had disappeared, he had to choose another option. Bring a living zombie in truth, Yibei asked him to do this. 
Zhang Han exclaimed and asked again, Did he bring a living zombie with him? Let him stand and not move. He will come now. The doctor ran downstairs. He approached Zhao Han, who said that he cut off the limbs so that the monster would not become rowdy. The doctor bent over him. He's really still frisky. Such a persistent will to live. What gives them such energy? He told the guy that this time he helped him a lot. It looks like he is a man of his word. Zhao Han scratched his head and laughed. Yao Yu thought how wonderful it was that they made peace. At this time, Yibei was checking his equipment. The rain stopped, the sun came out and illuminated the crowd of zombies. They raised their heads. One zombie's eyes changed color when suddenly the skin on his head tore open and a mutated monster appeared. One of the creatures jumped onto the balcony, where there was a small child chatting that the sun is shining so brightly and the flowers are smiling at him. He only had time to exclaim when he saw the monster. At that same second, his father heard a scream. He started running, calling his wife and son. The mutant stood in front of him, holding his dead wife by the throat and child. The men screamed in horror. Many mutated zombies crawled into apartments, broke windows, and attacked people who were hiding there. At school, Yibei's classmates tried to escape from the mutant, and he almost overtook one girl when something grabbed him by the neck, threw him back, and struck him. The girl turned around, another monster pulled out a red pearl from the mutant's brain. The monster looked in their direction. The schoolchildren recognized it as their classmate Feng. A huge crowd of zombies walked through the streets. Lai Ryuaxi sat on the roof of the building and controlled the mutants with her hand. Shubo said that it was powerful, so many zombies were moving in unison, like a school of fish. The girl grinned, it was not in vain that she suffered for so many days, her hand was enveloped in purple smoke. She asked if they had found out the location of Yibei. Wang Sheng replied that he was in the mountains at a research institute set up as a refuge. He can get there alone and kill him. Lai Ryuaxi said that she wouldn't do that. How could she let him die so easily? She raised her hand and said, until she tears him to shreds with her own hands, how else will she satisfy the hatred in her heart? She wants him to feel the approaching hopelessness. At this time, at the research institute, Zhao Han, standing by the car, asked Dr. Car Zhang Han why the alarm went off. They were just about to leave. The doctor replied that they should not go anywhere. They have big problems. Let them return to the laboratory building as soon as possible. The cameras installed in the city show that a large group of zombies is accumulating, and they are all moving towards the research center. Zhao Han asked what he meant by a large group of zombies. The doctor answered excitedly, probably more than a thousand men. Zhao Han said, what is it? Is it really because they are perhaps the last survivors, or have they offended someone? The doctor replied that he did not know what they managed to do there, but it was better to talk about it with Yibei. The man rushed and started knocking on the door, saying, Buddy, Yibei, everything is bad here. A thousand zombies are coming towards us. What should they do? The guy replied that the doctor had just told him about it. Zhao Han asked him if he was ready to go out and sweep them all away. Yibei replied that he was not ready yet and concentrated on typing something on the computer. The man got angry and asked if he was joking. Offers him to fight thousands of zombies alone. The guy said indifferently that he warned them that they needed to be prepared for such a situation, although it was developing faster than he expected, and this was completely the height of his assumptions. Now you can only rely on them, and if he is really Dr. Zhang Han, he will definitely figure out how to get out of this situation. Zhao Han became completely angry and yelled, asking in the end, does he understand what he's talking about? They don't have time to come up with anything. Yibei remained silent. Zhao Han went back and said, swearing out loud, that he was talking to a wall. Ultimately, when it comes to taking action, you only have to rely on yourself. He climbed the observation point tower and looked down, where he saw a huge cluster of zombies, which shocked him. He said how many there are. No matter how strong the walls of this laboratory are, they will not be able to stop them, so the zombies cannot be allowed to reach the walls. He was about to get into the car, the doctor asked him after seeing this on the cameras, why was he getting into the car? The man asked the doctor to open the gate. He would go to detain the monsters and let Zhang Han come up with something. If he doesn't return, they will urgently need to find a way to escape from here. Yao Yu shouted after him excitedly. The guy left the research center and told her not to worry. He was not going to die so easily. He pulled out a pistol and spoke, aimed a shot at the soul, and the green beam hit right in the center of the zombie cluster. The guy laughed, how invigorating it is. It feels like you don't even have to take aim. He'll turn them all into ashes. He aimed the gun again and fired again. 
Lai Ruoxi looked at Wang Sheng and heard him say about a powerful weapon that they did not expect to see. He added that this apparently complicates everything. Lai Ruoxi said that she wanted to see how long they could stand it. Zhao Han shot at the zombies, but no matter how much he killed them, there was no end to them. Suddenly, a fireball hit the car, and Yao Yu exclaimed while watching it through the camera. The car overturned and caught fire. Zhao Han quickly got out of it and saw that they were being attacked by a fire monster. How dare he attack on the sly? He gritted his teeth and fired, but the monster dodged and responded with a strong blow, hitting the car. Zhao Han managed to dodge and fired again. Jubo ran away. The guy shouted that he was a coward. Suddenly, he noticed that the zombies were rushing towards him. He hit them with green onions. Dr. Zhang Han warned that if he was surrounded by zombies, he would die. Let him come back quickly. The guy was running. He thought it was some kind of trap. Suddenly, Wang Sheng appeared next to him. He attacked Zhao Han, but the man was able to dodge. He pulled out a pistol and fired, but could not hit. Then the man tried to strike with his sword, but the monster quickly dodged. He wondered if Zhao Han was more agile than Yibei. The man told Vash Shen to die and shot again, but he dodged. Zhao Han said contentedly that he was not afraid of them. Lai Ryuaxi watched him from the tower. She ordered the zombies to attack. They rushed towards the man, making him surprised. Why on earth did zombies suddenly start running around so quickly? He cut them left and right, but realized that they were too fast for him. He chose an escape strategy, and suddenly a zombie fell from the sky in front of him. Zhao Han thought, how can they fall from the sky? Wang Sheng took them like metal cores and threw them towards Zhao Han. The man took a gun and killed them right in the air. He shouted, what should he do? The next zombie fell right at his feet. He was about to bite him, but the guy managed to cut him with his sword. He sat down tiredly and said that a little more, and it would have been the end for him. He looked at how the crowd of zombies was still running towards him. Zhao Han thought that shooting from such a close range would risk blowing himself up, and swinging a sword wouldn't work. A flash of light flashed in front of him. Wang Sheng asked what was happening. A green light covered the entire crowd of monsters. It was Yu Bei in his new uniform. His legs and arms were in iron. Xiao Han exclaimed, Buddy Yu Bei is finally here. Yao Yu was glad that Yu Bei arrived just in time. The old man replied that this guy was just something. Xiao Han said, Is this really the deadly weapon he has been working on for the past few days? It's amazing. Yi Bei told him not to relax, because the enemy was still nearby. If he has the strength, then he is on the clearing of zombies on the left side, on the guy on the right. You need to make sure that the zombies don't get close to the walls. Zhao Han laughed and said that as long as Yi Bei's friend is here, everything will go smoothly and he can deal with everyone. He fired a shot towards the zombies. The young man attacked with the help of an exoskeleton. The iron hand of the suit smashed them apart as if it was nothing at all. Zhao Han appreciated it and said it looked cool. After this wave, they will be able to collect more than a thousand black gold pearls. Maybe he could ask him to make him some battle armor. Yes, he needs to chop even more. He laughed while waving his sword. Lai Ryuaxi watched closely. Wang Sheng told her that Yi Bei had created weapons that were even more powerful and that they couldn't even come close to that power. The girl clenched her teeth and said, He believes that by putting the iron on yourself, you can save your life. Well, well, they'll take a look. The guy continued to kill zombies. The suit scattered them in all directions. Dr. Zhang Han and Yao Yu watched this. The man said, This exoskeleton is actually a powerful thing, and it seems that this technology is not exactly from the present time. It's hard to imagine that he was able to assemble something like this from unnecessary parts. Yao Yu said that Yi Bei's weapons were actually created from pearls taken from zombie heads. The old man exclaimed in surprise and began asking questions. Do zombies have pearls in their brains? What are they made of? In what part of the brain are they located? Yao Yu replied that they felt like metal and were located somewhere near the pituitary gland. Dr. Zhang Han grabbed his head and thought, so the zombies have crystals in their brains, and it turns out that they can create weapons from them. Why did Yubei hide this from him? It is very strange. He shouted for the girl to monitor the situation, and he would go to the laboratory and start dissecting the zombie that Xiao Han brought here. At this time, Lai Ryuaxi commanded that the zombies attack, they rushed forward. Zhao Han shouted that the zombies were coming here again, and it was like an earthquake. Yi Bei said sternly, there will be so many of them, and we need to kill them, we need to think less. Suddenly he noticed that the zombies were starting to jump on him, Lai Ryuaxi squeezed her hand, and the zombie exploded right above him. 
the guy looked questioningly to the side. She ordered Yibei to be torn into pieces for her. The guy thought, are there really zombies capable of self-destruction? Jubo said that this is like a battle between gods, they will not help here. Wang Sheng said that Lai Ryuaxi ate seven beads of this black gold and became who she is now. During those days, her body was continuously torn apart and transformed. A person who is truly strong in spirit can endure such torment. It is not difficult to see that she has hatred for Yibei. Zhubo reasoned that she ate seven black gold beads, but not only did she not turn into a monster, she also became several times stronger than them. It turns out that the more black gold you eat, the better. Wang Sheng replied that he did not know by what principle this happens, but did not want to experience the same torment that he had to bring to her. Maybe the girl is no longer who she was. Lai Ryuaxi continued to blast zombies over Yibei. Finally, he realized that someone was controlling them. He raised his hand and struck the tower on which the girl was. She began to fall down. Wang Sheng screamed in fear, but Lai Ryuaxi landed successfully on the ground. She looked up. Yibei looked straight at her and struck with his hand. She defended herself with a living wall of zombies, but this did not help her. The guy was already here and struck again, but she managed to jump away. She fought back, but he was stronger, and with the next blow, he pressed the girl to the ground with his hand. Yibei didn't expect that she didn't die that day, and asked how many pearls did she eat. The girl tried to attack with her hand, but the guy mercilessly lifted the exoskeleton's leg and crushed the girl's limb. She screamed in pain. The guy said that in a past life he lost his arm because of her. It's time to pay for it. Then he noticed Wang Sheng approaching, shouting for the guy to let the girl go. Yibei attacked with the help of an exoskeleton, but the monster deftly dodged. He ran up and jumped on the guy. But he managed to put out his hand with Lai Ryuaxi to meet him. With his other hand, he released a green beam. Zhu Bo, who was watching this, thought, how did he kill Wang Sheng? Even Lai Ryuaxi caught, his combat exoskeleton is terrible. He still needs to escape from here urgently. Lai Ryuaxi shuddered in pain. Yibei turned to her and asked if she was really special if she could retain her human appearance. But its mere existence is dangerous in itself, and the infection must be uprooted. He squeezed the exoskeleton's hand. The girl screamed in pain. Suddenly, the zombies nearby began to mutate. Yibei looked shocked. He didn't expect this. Have zombies already begun the first stage of mutation? Yao Yu said that everything is bad. There are more and more zombies around the research institute. Xiao Han steadfastly holds the defense at the main gate, but zombies have begun to climb over the walls and enter the territory of the institute. Lai Ryuaxi laughed when she heard this and said with satisfaction that none of them would survive. They would turn into zombies and become her slaves. Yibei gritted his teeth and threw the girl into the crowd of mutants. Then he sent a beam from both hands at them and ran towards Zhao Han. Meanwhile, the man realized that he had run out of bullets and everyone was surrounded by zombies. One of the mutants attacked him, but Zhao Han repelled the attack with his sword. He thought, what about this zombie? Is it really a new type of anomalous? He cut its body with a sword, but only a wound formed on the monster. The lightsaber can no longer cut them instantly. He was slowly surrounded by monsters. He began to run away from them, wondering what kind of creatures these were. The light blade does not cut them, but only slightly throws them away. Is this really the first stage of mutation? Yao Yu asked excitedly if he was okay. Several zombies climbed over the wall and entered the research institute. Dr. Zhang Han is busy in the laboratory and does not know what is happening outside. She added that Zhao Han needed to return to the main building as soon as possible. He replied that he thought so too, but he walked around everything in a circle and realized that zombies had completely surrounded the institute and he couldn't get inside. Then Yibei's exoskeleton suddenly grabbed him. Zhao Han exclaimed, can his friend really take him on the flight? The guy replied that this is not a flight. He will move him to a research center and his task is to destroy all the zombies that get there. He set the man down in the courtyard of the institute and said that some zombies had already undergone the first stage of mutation, but despite the fact that their skin was tougher, they could still be destroyed by inflicting more blows. However, they are more agile, so don't underestimate them. Xiao Han sat down on the ground and said that he was tired to death. He needed to take a breath. The zombies outside will be left in the care of Yubei's friend. The guy jumped onto the fence and directed the rays into the crowd of zombies. A couple of mutants climbed over the fence. Zhao Han was sitting there. He asked Yao Yu to bring water. He feels that he is about to die of thirst. 
The monster let out a roar and got close to the man. Zhao Han pulled out a sword and pierced him, then threw him to the ground and cut his chest. He struck the monster. How dare he disturb him while he was resting? He attacks from behind, so let him take it. We need to check how many blows it takes to cut off his head. Then Yao Yu came out with water. She asked if Zhao Han was okay. The man wiped the sweat from his forehead and began to take out the pearl. The girl noticed that this zombie was different from the others. She saw him on the cameras. Zhao Han took out the pearl and said, It is really red. At this time, in the laboratory, Dr. Zhang Han finished extracting the pearl from the zombie that Zhao Han brought. He looked at it carefully and said, Black pearls look opaque, but they give off a dark greenish glow. Is this black metal turning people into zombies? Or is it a polymer that is formed after turning into a zombie? Black metal, black gold, how many more secrets are there? Meanwhile, Yi Bei continued his destruction. He swept away all the monsters using his exoskeleton. And finally the job was done. He told Zhao Han that the zombies had been destroyed, and he could go out and start collecting pearls. Yi Bei entered the research center, and Zhao Han said what else to expect from the guy. There is nothing to say. Efficiency is at its best. Yibei objected that the exoskeleton had not yet been completed, otherwise it would have been even more effective. Zhao Han looked out of the gate and sighed. The remains of the zombies look like small hills. Yes, he will collect everything here forever. He turned to the guy with a request. After he collects the pearls, will Yibei help him create battle armor? The young man replied that he was exhausted over these few days, so let him wait until he gets some sleep. Dr. Zhang Han shouted at him to take his time. He wants to ask something. He pulled out a green pearl and hinted whether it was time for the guy to tell him about the secrets of black gold. Yibei smiled. Zhao Han was collecting pearls, he was so tired, and there were still thousands of corpses to deal with. But fortunately, they are all charred, and it is easier to split the skulls, but he does it all alone, which is quite sad. At the research center, the doctor talked with Yibei. He said asking, is this black gold really the source of energy for zombies? The guy replied that as soon as a person becomes infected with the zombie virus, such a black pearl is formed in his brain. Zombies are able to absorb sunlight through an ability similar to photosynthesis, and thus they accumulate the required amount of energy in this black gold. Dr. Zhang Han exclaimed, so the zombie still has an ability similar to photosynthesis. Although the pearls emit green light, he did not find chlorophyll or the corresponding enzymes in them, but he found some other elements that he had never seen before. These pearls seemed to be made of active metal. He used light and heat, and it caused a strong reaction. In addition, they have a strong affinity for blood and metal. Yibei confirmed that especially to human blood. The zombie virus spreads faster in the human body than in animals or plants, and therefore it is easier for people to mutate into zombies. And after zombies absorb light for a certain period of time, they begin the first stage of mutation. The doctor exclaimed, that's what it's all about. Before that, he observed from the cameras that those zombies behaved very aggressively at night. But during the day, they lazily wandered around the streets or generally stood still. But in fact, they photosynthesized. Energy was accumulated for the first stage of mutation. He added, but all day today, these zombies were running around in the daylight like crazy. Yao Yu came up from behind with two mugs of coffee. Yi Bei replied that it was because they were controlled by anomalies. Shang Han asked, are those two anomalous creatures, one with black spikes and the other fire breathing? Did they bring the zombies here? The guy replied that these two are anomalous, mutated after eating black gold, and the person controlling that horde of zombies is a new super anomalous and his former head Lai Ryuoxi. The doctor said, is black gold also edible? How does the human body metabolize this metal? And by eating black gold you can mutate, that is, get superpowers. Is this a transformation pill? Yibei replied that they also investigated this aspect. Now you can be sure that by eating black gold the mutation is irreversible. Anomalies have always been a serious threat. They tried to destroy them first and as quickly as possible. The old man thought, the zombies have mutated, so is this the first stage or already the second? Those who eat black gold become anomalous, and there are also super anomalous. There is too much information, and the doctor will need time to figure it all out. He said sternly to Yibei, his school shouldn't teach this. How does he know all this in the end? Yibei replied that he will tell you when the time comes, but he believes that the doctor can study everything himself, and this is more valuable. The man exclaimed that the guy had piqued his interest again. Will the guy give him the opportunity to study his weapon? 
Yibei yawned and said that he would still use it, but Zhang Han could do whatever he wanted with it, then added that as long as he was sleeping, there was no need to disturb him. The man agreed and ran away. Yao Yu looked at Yibei. She thought that although she really wanted him to take her to look for dad, he was very tired from fighting all day. She covered him with a blanket and sat down next to him, leaning against the sofa. She thought that she really missed dad and began to cry. The sun was setting, Zhao Han threw away the iron shovel and lay down on the ground, saying that he couldn't do this anymore, how great it would be if he had an automatic zombie skull grinder. But the thought that he will be able to control the exoskeleton that his friend Yi Bei will build for him inspires him to continue. And so that he can wear the exoskeleton, he will try his best to lose weight. He did not notice that Zhu Bo was watching him. The monster thought that it was all over, because a thousand zombies were destroyed in one day. Wang Sheng and Lai Ryuxi are killed. What should he do? He may surrender, but then they will definitely kill him without any hesitation. He is a monster, so they will not accept him. Zhu Bo thought, just now these zombies turned blood red. It looked like they were molting. Not only did they get out of Lai Ryuxi's control, but they also attacked him. He had to burn them all. But if all the zombies begin to mutate like this, they become more and more aggressive and furious, then what to do? He needs to collect more black gold, eat some more to become stronger. Yes, maybe he can become human again, so he will do so. Suddenly, he stopped abruptly. Another mutated monster stood in front of him. Jubo wanted to tell him something. The white monster waved his hand, indicating to go after him. Jubo followed him. Night came, Yao Yu woke up from her sleep and noticed that Yibei was sleeping next to Zhao Han, and the guy was in his workshop doing something. Killed zombies were lying on the roads. Yao Yu's dad looked at the sign of the Zaiyu Minimarket store. He said his daughter's name and entered the looted store, walked up to the table where there was a note written by Yao Yu that she had gone to look for him. The man said questioningly out loud, Where is she now? Crowds of zombies were moving along the street. A man came out to them but they walked past him. There was a huge armored vehicle at the research institute. Zhao Han exclaimed, asking, what is this tank armored vehicle? Whatever it is, it looks like it was assembled from several cars. He ran around the car, looked at every inch and exclaimed, it looks super cool. He likes it so much. He turned to Yi Bei asking, did he use the black gold that he collected? Can this beauty be transformed into an exoskeleton? The guy answered ironically, did he watch any movies? It's just a car, nothing more. It would be better for him to turn the steering wheel than to control the exoskeleton. The machine parts are made of 2117 pieces of black gold and 12 pieces of red black gold, which were taken from zombies that underwent the first wave of mutation. The car has a powerful engine, so you need to drive it well. Xiao Han exclaimed, his friend understands him perfectly. Yes, he is his god. Can he sit down and experience it? Yibei nodded, the car is not much different from the usual one. He will figure out where everything is, and they can hit the road. Zhao Han asked, will they go to look for Yao Yu's father? Great! Suddenly the girl exclaimed with a request to wait. She said that she also wanted to go and brought with her a huge pink backpack in the shape of a hair. Yibei refused her, because there are zombies everywhere outside, mutated after the first wave. If she comes out, she will die. They won't have time to keep an eye on her. The girl said he told her to wait a few days, and she did so. Yao Yu should also have a hand in finding her father. Yibei said angrily, no means no, these are her whims, he will tell the doctor to tie her up in the laboratory. Yao Yu had tears in her eyes. Xiao Han looked out of the car and asked why Yibei made the girl cry. Seniors don't behave like that. Zhang Han came, he asked the girl not to cry and took the drone with him, saying that he had fixed it. For this he used black gold, because he could not fly far with his battery. And as soon as he used black gold, the operating time increased significantly, and a stable connection was maintained. In addition, it can be attached to a car as a transit station, and can be activated at any time, while increasing the viewing radius. Yao Yu stopped crying, wiped her tears, and thanked him. The old man added that this way she could stay in the observation room and still help with the search. Yibei said that it was very good that in such a short period of time, the doctor was able to learn ways to use black gold. Zhang Han laughed and said that although he was not a real doctor, he was still capable of something. Yibei put the exoskeleton in the car and said that it was time for them to move out. Xiao Han started the engine and said that everything is ready. The incomparable iron bull is started. Yibei commanded Yao Yu that she had an aerial view and let her stay in touch with them. The girl promised that she would look after them and let them be more careful. 
Zhao Han stepped on the gas, and the car roared out onto the street. He was incredibly happy and shouted, They are now going down the mountain, but it seems that they are driving on a flat road. This is cool. The armored car rushed down the road, hitting other cars, Zhao Han said with a laugh. Crashing into a car is like cutting tofu. This is amazing. This way they can drive across a bridge that is filled with cars. Yibei said that the previous CCTV footage showed that Yao Yu's father was already at the embankment. They can look for him in that area. Zhao Han noticed that it's strange that not a single zombie is visible here. Maybe they were all destroyed when they were brought to the research institute. The mutated zombies noticed the car, they jumped on it. Zhao Han exclaimed, just remember. They tried to break the glass. Zhao Han shouted that the monster was blocking his view and asked Yibei if there were external weapons on this car. The guy replied that ordinary gunpowder weapons were not installed and they were not able to cope with these zombies, but they now had something better. He pressed the button, the machine lit up with an electric charge. This expanded the mutants and they died. Zhao Han exclaimed, it just incinerated everyone cool. Yibei said, since there are zombies here who have undergone the first wave of mutation, there are no people left alive in this area. You can just drive through it. A certain man stood on the roof and watched them. He grinned and said that this was quite interesting. They stopped and Zhao Han said that it was in this place that Yao Yu saw her father through the cameras. It's so quiet here. Yibei suggested launching the drone. Yao Yu will control it. Let him search from above. The drone flew into the sky. The girls spoke in the rooms on the upper floors. It seems that there were traces that people lived there, but now it is empty. She remembers that Dad walked in this direction, but does not know if he stopped here. Xiao Han asked Jubei, what will they do now? The guy replied that if he had nothing to do, he could go look at apartments on the lower floors, but he wanted to sleep. Since he had gone to bed late for several days in a row, it was time to get some sleep. Zhao Han replied that he still felt safer in the car, by the way, he could drive the car and honk the horn. Father Yao Yu will hear and show himself, he pressed the signal. At the same moment, a crowd of zombies turned on them. Yao Yu immediately warned that she saw zombies heading towards them. Zhao Han exclaimed, the zombies are already here. I really didn't think so, but this is just in time. He will try out all the weapons that are installed. He reached for the buttons. Let's see what it is. The man pressed one of the buttons, sharp spikes appeared from the wheels of the car. He laughed and pointed the car straight at the zombies, and the sharp spikes knocked them down. Xiao Han laughed and pressed the next button. Lasers appeared from the car and blew up the monsters. He was delighted. Yao Yu told him to be careful and not destroy the houses, because her father might be inside. Xiao Han pouted and said that we need something calmer and quieter. The next one will not be so explosive. He pressed the button and some crushers opened in the car. They were grinding zombies. The system in the car notified that one piece of black gold had been collected. Xiao Han said, is this really an automatic zombie thresher? He spread his arms wide to hug Yibei and said how well he knows him. The guy is just a god. He loves him so much. The car skidded on the road. Yao Yu asked if everything was fine with them. Why was it so noisy? She looked at the camera and exclaimed that she had found her father's car. The girl sent an image. It's about 500 meters away from them. Zhao Han said that this is wonderful. Let him tell where to go, and they will see what's there. Yao Yu said that there was no one in the car. The windows were damaged, and the front part of the car was damaged. Perhaps Dad got into trouble on the way back after picking up the goods. Yibei said that they would see if he left any messages in the car. In any case, he couldn't have gone far in such a short period of time. Yao Yu was wondering where her father was when she suddenly coughed and fell on the table. The doctor ran up to her and asked what was wrong with her. Xiao Han and Yibei drove up to the abandoned car. The man inspected the car while Yibei asked the doctor what was wrong with the girl. Zheng Han replied that she had lost consciousness and it seemed like her illness had resurfaced. When she concentrates too much on something, she forgets to take her medicine. Luckily, he saved some here. He said, poor child, her father's heart was also breaking with grief that his daughter was sick. The old man is not an expert in the field of leukemia treatment, and with all this apocalypse, finding the right doctor will be almost impossible. Zhang Han asked if Yubei knows Puai Hospital in Anchi. Let them go there for equipment and medicine, and when they return to the research institute, he will do everything in his power. Yubei replied that he understood him. Then Zhao Han came up and said that he checked his father's car but didn't find any notes there. It seems that after he crashed, he immediately ran away from here. He didn't even have time to take the luggage from the car. 
The man also found something strange. He pulled out a small iron black box and said that the whole car was full of them. There is no logo or description on them. It looks like sugar or medicine inside. Yao Yu's store doesn't sell anything like this. Yibei said, maybe these are some special pills. We need to take them with us and show them to the doctor. The man replied that the girl would feel better and asked if they would continue the search for her father. The guy replied that he first needed to go to Puai Hospital. The doctor sent him a list of medications. Zhao Han started the car. The doctor radioed that he needed to continue to look after the girl and monitor the progress of the black gold experiment. So he won't be able to control the drone or conduct surveillance from the air, but they can still communicate through it. Let them be careful on their way, Xiao Han said. Yao Yu really has leukemia, as she has never fainted before. It is not surprising that Yi Bei did not allow her to go with them. He wanted to say something else, but did not have time. The guy ordered him to shut up and drive the car. The young man thought that in two years all the reserves in the city would be exhausted. The city filled with zombies would completely die out. In the current situation, the process may accelerate. He couldn't change anything at all. Instead, he allowed her to live in an even more unhappy world, but at least live. At this time, Zhu Bo was injected with a green substance into his arm. It grew back in an instant. Now he feels his strength returning to him. An unknown man in a black suit laughed and said, This is how the monster controls the element of fire. Zhu Bo exclaimed and thanked him, This is just a miracle medicine. The anomaly asked what organization they were from. The man replied that they are a team specializing in searching for anomalous creatures. Their goal is to create a new world in which anomalous people can live happily. Zhubo asked, is a new world possible? Is the man also an anomalist? The unknown person answered, of course, and there are quite a few like him here. The fire monster asked if he could become the same. The man smiled slyly and replied that it was possible for the sake of a happy new world where there would be no sorrows or worries. At the same time, at Puai Hospital, Zhao Han stopped at a sign on the wall that said that this is private property. It is dangerous not to enter. Yibei was putting on an exoskeleton, and the man asked, Has this hospital been occupied by people? The guy replied that this was not surprising, because this was a strategically important object. They will take what they need and leave. Yibei broke out the glass, and they went inside the building. Xiao Han said, It's strange that there is no one. There is silence all around. No zombies are visible either. Everyone ran away and hid. Or is it a trap? He looked at the wall. Bright graffiti said to everyone get out of here, or they will meet death. Yibei said that they would split up. The guy would go collect medicine, and Zhao Han would go collect equipment. If anything happens, let him contact him. A man walked along the floor and said that the second most hated place in his life was the hospital. Just the smell of peroxide made him tremble. He sniffed and said, strangely, it wasn't the smell of peroxide, but something like a fruity, sweet aroma. After these words, he immediately fell to the ground unconscious. Yibei asked what was going on there. Was he really suffering from nonsense? The guy smelled a smell that was familiar to him. A helmet with air filtration appeared from the exoskeleton. He put it on and attacked the hole from which the aroma came, destroying the ceiling. Traces of some kind of smoke appeared. Yibei shouted to Zhao Han that there were traps in the hospital and he needed to leave immediately. Then he noticed someone's figure and swung his exoskeleton hand. Yibei stood opposite a certain girl. She touched his exoskeleton and said that it was very cool. If she's not mistaken, then this exoskeleton could also be made from pearls that are extracted from zombie brains, right? The girl said that she would be very grateful if the guy would allow him to meet the creator of this exoskeleton. She smiled brightly. Yibei asked who she is. He wondered if she was an anomalist, but the smell was not at all similar. The girl smiled and replied that she forgot to introduce herself. Her name is Tang Tang. She is a sweet and brilliant MD. Yibei asked, did she release poisonous gas into the hospital? And did you eat these pearls? Tang Tang replied that she actually released the poisonous gas, since it is very effective at driving away zombies and stupefying intruders. But are the pearls and zombie brains edible? The guy replied that it didn't matter. He asked if she was here alone. The girl grinned and replied that there was only one princess left in this abandoned castle. And he intends to kidnap her from here just like a villain. Yibei asked angrily, isn't she afraid of death? Tang Tang said that death is as tempting for her as sweets in a candy store, and she doesn't mind dying from what she loves. Yibei wondered if she was crazy. He then asked her, since she was an MD, what did she specialize in? Tan Tan replied that these are viral diseases. 
The guy asked how she discovered pearls in zombie brains. Did she use these pearls to create gas? The girl grabbed her head and exclaimed, God, how annoying is he? All he does is ask his endless questions, but he never answered hers. She pointed her finger at him and said, in the end, he can introduce her to the creator of this exoskeleton. Yibei remained silent and said that their research institute is located on the other side. If she wants, he will take her there. Tang Tang raised her hands up in joy. She added that she had one more small request, and he must agree. Zhao Han dreamed of a deserted road. He was sitting in a car and talking to someone on the phone. The man asked, is Kun there and Zayo Kai too? The pink-haired girl replied that she didn't like to set others up. Some guy said this was their last job. They will finish and finally be able to return home and have a wedding. The girl replied, what a shame it is. Zhao Han grinned and said, this is no time to be modest. They are a perfect couple. He exclaimed, there is a car ahead, and it is indeed the same time that Lao Zayo was talking about. They will act according to plan. It was decided to wait until their guests reached the right place. Lao Zayo would give a signal, and then they would begin to act together. Xiao Han looked out the window excitedly and asked on the walkie-talkie, Zayo Kai, Lao Zayo hasn't given a signal yet, why did she start? The truck hit the pink car in which there was a girl, and Kun shouted for Zhao Han to leave quickly, something went wrong. Zhao Han saw that an unknown car drove up to him, he wondered how they were figured out. He pressed the gas pedal and woke up. The man stood up abruptly as Yibei and Tang Tang looked at him. The guy asked him if he got enough sleep, then let him get to work. Zhao Han didn't understand what was happening. Tang Tang grinned and said that he was poisoned by a gas specially developed by her. If antibodies are not introduced within the next three hours, it will turn into a puddle of pus. Zhao Han asked clickedly, who is she anyway? Yibei told them to stop yelling and let them help him drag those cans into the car. The man exclaimed, will Yibei at least explain to him what is happening here? Tang Tang said that these samples are extremely important to her. Let him help move them. She folded her arms across her chest, asking him. Zhao Han asked why they all like to force a person to do something he doesn't want. The girl asked threateningly that if he breaks at least one sample, will she put him in these jars? Zhao Han sweated and thought that she was a demon, but he obediently took the sample. The girl clapped her hands cheerfully and said that this was really hard work for two gentlemen. Yibei still couldn't figure out who she was. This Swedish gas that she created, he remembers it very well. On that day of judgment, this gas was often used by the leaders of various gangs. This is how they defended themselves from zombies and attacked their enemies. The poisonous gas honey cloud puts a person into a state of rest and at the same time causes fear in him. And is the developer really this girl? Just like Dr. Zhang Han, if she is also a genius mechanic, then he should keep a close eye on her. At the very least, we can't let it fall into the hands of a gang of twilight dragons. Xiao Han said that they were finally finished. Tang Tang looked at the machine and asked, Were black pearls also used in its creation? Such a cute car is perfect to be a princess car. Xiao Han asked Yibei quietly, Is he sure that he wants to take her with them? It seems to him that there is something wrong with her head. The guy replied that they had found all the medicines and equipment, and with the doctor there would be a better chance of curing Yao Yu. Suddenly he heard something, a giant monster in the form of a dog climbed onto the building and roared loudly. Xiao Han asked in fear, what is this? Dog? There? Or is this a new type of anomaly? Yubei shouted at them not to be stupid and to quickly get into the car. The monster jumped off the building, the guy attacked him with a beam, the monster fell to the ground. Xiao Han and Tang Tang were already sitting in the car, the man said that, fortunately, they would leave quickly. He asked how his friend Yubei was doing. The young man shouted at him to take the doctor away, and he would sort it out. The guy struck with the exoskeleton's fist and fired a beam. Xiao Han asked, what kind of monster is this, so huge? Tang Tang said that this huge dog had been roaming around the hospital for the past few days, making it difficult for anyone to go outside. The man exclaimed, so she knew that there was a monster nearby. Why didn't she say it right away? The girl asked again. They somehow came to her. Didn't they know about him? Tang Tang noticed that they have such advanced equipment, so this monster won't be a problem, right? Are they from the Doomsday Team, the last hope for humanity? Zhao Han exclaimed that now is not the time for jokes. The girl replied that she was not joking, since she had carefully studied the zombie virus that had spread throughout the world. They are still alive, which means they can already be considered the chosen ones. Zhao Han looked at her in confusion. 
At this time, Yibei was fighting with an anomaly. He thought that this was another monster that should not exist at this time, namely a super beast. This is not a domestic or wild animal mutated as a result of infection with a zombie virus. It was bred using advanced genetic engineering and was fused with a zombie virus. A product not of this time. The monster attacked with an electric shock. Yibei seemed to understand what was happening. He attacked the monster with its horns. She was able to reflect his beam attacks. The monster ran at the guy and almost caught him with its paw, but Yibei managed to grab the monster by the horns on its back and tore them off. He should have been more flexible. The monster fell on the asphalt and tried to electrocute the guy, but it didn't work. Yibei chuckled and asked, Is this trick no longer working? In that case, he will show him his. The guy jumped up and threw his entire beam at the monster's head until he completely smashed it. He tore off a piece of flesh. Inside there was a huge black pearl. He pulled it out with the help of an exoskeleton. The transformed black gold implanted into the animal is the heart of the super beast. Having such a subsequent work will go easier. An unknown man with glasses stood on the roof of the building again. He thought that the guy would be a serious hindrance. Outside Puai Hospital, Yibei tried to contact Zhao Han by radio. It looks like they have gone far and the signal is not reaching. Then he will return alone. The guy climbed up, and then out of the corner of his eye, he noticed a man standing on the edge of the roof. The stranger was the first to greet the guy and wanted to say something, but Yibei instantly attacked him. The man was able to avoid this attack, and now he was standing on another building. He said, there is no need to be so impulsive. Perhaps the guy is biased towards abnormalities, but the man has no bad intentions. Yibei did not stop. He tried to hit the man with the beam again. The unknown man smiled and repeated that he had no desire to quarrel with him. In an instant, he was already on the exoskeleton's arm, saying that he was only here to convey a message. It won't take much time. Yubei gritted his teeth and squeezed his exoskeleton's hand. The man said, since the guy is happy with communication in such positions, then let it remain that way. He already knows who they are, and yet let him allow him to introduce himself. The man called himself Sun Bin from the Organization of Darkness. By order of the technical consultant of their organization, he invites Yibei to visit. The meeting place is the Northern Industrial Zone. He originally planned to invite only the doctor's girlfriend, but now that's all he can do. At this moment, Yibei clenched his hand. There was only a bloody stain left in it. The guy thought, an anomaly with the ability to replace himself with a bloody corpse. It's not that it's a threat, just annoying. Has the Organization of Darkness already formed? Although he does not want to think in this direction, he still needs to prepare for the worst. After that day of judgment, 50 years later, the organization of darkness became the most powerful. They possessed colossal reserves of resources and gathered various kinds of elite representatives, including several brilliant mechanics. They used the most advanced technology to breed the strongest species of anomalous in a futile attempt to create a world united by supernatural beings. Surely that super beast was created by them, and they must have been closely watching them for a long time. The zombie virus has just broken out, and the organization of darkness has already been formed. There can only be one reason. Someone from this organization also returned from the future. While Yibei was thinking about this, Xiao Han and Tang Tang arrived at the hideout. The girl asked, Is this their research institute? It looks simple. Is their exoskeleton and car definitely created here? Xiao Han said that Yibei didn't tell her anything at all, but she still went with them, so fearless. The girl laughed and replied that she was simply good at understanding people. She thanked Xiao Han for her help. The man replied that for the sake of Yao Yu, he would do whatever Tang Tang wanted. Then Zhang Han appeared, he said. They really found a doctor. The girl turned around and greeted the old man, asking if he was the same doctor who created the machine and the combat exoskeleton. She is also a doctor and came here specifically to meet him. The old man asked how she knew that he was a doctor. Tang Tang replied that despite his sloppiness, he couldn't hide the temperament of a mad scientist. Zhang Han thought to himself, what's wrong with this girl? What did Yu Bei tell her? The man cleared his throat and said that he knew her too. The youngest and most talented doctor of science in the field of virology. She has also been published in scientific journals. Tang Tang was embarrassed and replied that she was very flattered. Zhang Han thought that her image of a sweet girl matched her demeanor. And how did she manage to survive outside? The girl said, you need to put aside the exchange of compliments and get down to business. She wants to work with him to study the black pearls that were in the zombies' heads. The doctor was able to create such a cool exoskeleton from these pearls, 
so he must be well aware of what they are. Cheng Han exclaimed, she actually has black gold. Tang Tang asked in surprise, is this called black gold? Did the doctor give it that name? The man scratched his head in embarrassment and thought, what should he do? Tell her he's not the doctor she's talking about. She seems to know a lot about black gold. One way or another, Yi Bei doesn't want to tell him all the secrets of black gold. Still, it would be better if he could explore this with Dr. Tang Tang. The old man said that he would only be happy to join in the research. He has made many discoveries lately. The girl laughed and said it was great. Zhang Han asked her to help him with something first. Yao Yu was lying in the room. Tang Tang was carefully looking at the tablet. Zhang Han asked her, what is it? The girl took off her mask with a sigh and asked who the girl was to the old man, the granddaughter. The man replied that he treated her this way, although they were not related by blood. Tang Tang said that she could only say one thing and showed a hand gesture. The old man asked again, does this mean that everything is fine? Tang Tang exclaimed that this is not so. Then Zhang Han asked, did she really have three years left? The girl said sternly that Yao Yu had three months left. She had encountered the same disease countless times. It's not that she scares him, but she doesn't know how this girl is still alive. Her current body condition is no longer able to take higher doses of chemotherapy. In addition, due to the influence of abnormal viruses, conventional methods are unable to eliminate the tumor. Zhang Han asked excitedly what to do. Tang Tang took out the pearl and said that all that was left was to use it. Yao Yu opened her eyes and heard voices. Zhang Han asked, is she suggesting that the girl eat this? The girl replied, what's wrong with that? These metal balls are digestible, right? She intends to use this black gold to create a new drug that will replace chemotherapy. The old man asked if this was possible. Tang Tang replied that she tried. Under special conditions, this black gold is activated, emits unusual energy, and thereby promotes the restoration of damaged cells. In addition, it creates a new shell around them. The man asked, isn't this the same as with the anomalous people who became like this after eating black gold? He won't let this happen to Yao Yu. Tang Tang asked, what kind of idiot would eat these black beads? Zhang Han replied that he saw several of them. After eating black gold, they received superpowers. The girl thought, this is something new. He will tell her more about it. Consuming such an energetic substance without conducting research can cause extremely unstable consequences. She doesn't even see any other outcome other than sudden death. In that case, this is exactly what they should study. Tang Tang would be able to quickly finish preparing the medicine, and then she would need the help of Dr. Zhang Han. The old man asked to be more careful. He doesn't want Yao Yu to turn into a monster. The girl replied that they had no time left and had no other choice. At this time, Xiao Han finished dragging the samples. He asked, what is so valuable about these zombies cut into pieces? Tang Tang came up from behind and thanked him for his hard work. Thanks to him and Yibei, she was able to meet with Dr. Zhang Han. Xiao Han asked, is Yao Yu's disease curable? The girl replied that the chances were high. The man said, as long as she's okay, he'll go check on Yibei's friend. Tang Tang said that the guy seems like someone you can rely on. He should be fine. By the way, will they go looking for the girl's father? Zhao Han nodded. Tang Tang asked to return it safely if they could. This will greatly help heal Yao Yu. At this time, Yi Bei is on the roof of the building. He said that he could die from such heat. A lot of time has passed and Zhao Han has not returned. He needs to get water. Yi Bei took off and reached the shopping center, breaking a window and getting inside. He looked at his feet in surprise and asked why there was a pool here. Although he was thirsty, suddenly he heard a sound. Something ran in the darkness. Ibei directed the beam in that direction when suddenly an unknown monster tried to swallow him. He wondered if this was another super beast. The monster threw the guy into the wall. Ibei tried to attack the monster with a beam, but missed. He struck again, but the monster was more agile. The guy could barely hold back his attacks. And finally the beam reached its target. The monster fell to the floor. A figure formed from its head. Zhao Han drove through the streets. To his surprise, it was quiet. Yibei should have already killed that monster. Yao Yu addressed him using a drone and asked if he could hear her. Zhao Han asked, did she wake up? The girl replied that she felt better. Aren't they outside now? Zhao Han said that in her current state, she should rest well, let her leave the search to them. Yao Yu replied that she still couldn't sleep now, so she would search with them, so she would be calmer. Zhao Han asked her not to force herself. Aerial reconnaissance is now on her. The drone took off. The girl said that she saw a group of zombies around a construction site. 
Maybe there are survivors nearby. She noticed that someone was surrounded. There was a girl sitting on a building block container. Zhao Han asked, where is she from? Yao Yu asked if he knew her. The man explained that she was captured by bandits and disappeared after her release. He didn't think she would be here. Yao Yu said that they should help her. Zhao Han pressed the gas pedal and said that what he does best is save beauties. The armored vehicle demolished the zombies near the container. Yao Yu explained to the girl that they would now disperse the zombies and she would wait for the right moment and jump on the car. Yao Yu asked her to hurry up. The girl jumped onto the back and Yao Yu told Zhao Han to drive. The girl leaned over and looked into the salon. Zhao Han said with satisfaction that they were the invincible team of Doomsday. At this time, Yibei was fighting with the anomaly. The monster was gaining the upper hand. The guy covered his eyes with his hands. He couldn't look any longer. The protective mask was damaged in the previous battle and cannot be used. The monster attacked the guy, but he managed to dodge, struck back, but missed. The monster hooked Yibei with its tail and began to drown him in the pool. With his eyes, he made it impossible for the young man to move. Yibei thought, is he really going to die like this? The monster was about to pierce him with its tail. Suddenly, green rays pierced the walls of the building and hit the monster. Xiao Han destroyed the wall by driving in an armored vehicle. He asked if Yibei was okay. The doomsday team is here. The monster tried to hide under the water, but Yibei grabbed it by the tail. He said that they were not finished yet, let him not dream of escaping. The guy hit the monster and asked Zhao Han to shoot lasers at him if he looked at him closely. Yibei attacked with the rays of his exoskeleton. The monster fell to the floor. The guy grabbed him by the head and said, Where did the hybrid anomaly come from here? The organization of darkness sent to kill him? Let him answer if he can, and if he can't speak, then let him slap himself. The monster has spoken, the organization of darkness. It doesn't want to go back there. Xiao Han asked how the big dog he was fighting with turned into a snake. Then the monster saw the girl sitting in the car and said her name. He extended his hand and shouted calling a girl named Lena. Yubei shouted, why did she burst out? If she makes noise, he will strangle her. The girl stood up and asked, is she Annie? Sister? The monster kept calling her name. Xiao Han said, is this monster not a sister? Did you also eat black gold and become an anomaly? The girl sat on her knees and asked how her sister became like this. The monster said that this was all an organization of darkness and their experiments. She was in so much pain. Yibei asked, did she talk enough? Then he will end her suffering. The girl asked not to kill the monster. Although she does not know who made her like this, she is still her sister. Then Yao Yu shouted for Yibei to wait. They are sisters and have just been reunited. They cannot be killed. The guy told the girl not to be so naive. She is fused with the super beast. Her mind is no longer in a normal state. She is extremely dangerous and must be destroyed. The sisters hugged and cried. Yao Yu stood up for them. She asked Yibei to let them talk, but the guy interrupted the girl. He shouted that this snake almost killed him. He won't spare her. Zhao Han added that it was Yao Yu who noticed how he was dragged under the water by the monster. If she hadn't told him to move inside, he wouldn't be standing here now. Yibei turned away and said that they were all a bunch of idiots. The monster asked, are they not from the Organization of Darkness? Yao Yu said that they are looking for survivors in the city. The monster said that he escaped and the Organization of Darkness brought a large dog here to track it down. Yao Yu asked if Annie mistook Yibei for one of the Organization of Darkness, so she attacked. Annie replied that she was really scared, but she didn't want to hurt anyone. If only everything was okay with Lena. Yao Yu thought it was very cute. By the way, how about Lena go with them? The research institute is quite spacious and there are not many people there. Their doctors are currently researching zombies. Maybe they can help her sister. The girl asked again, is it really possible? Yao Yu replied that she would be happy to help others. But Annie won't fit in the car. The monster told her sister that she would follow her wherever she went. Xiao Han asked Yao Yu if she really wanted to invite this monster woman over to them. The girl replied that the sisters would feel safer together. The man looked back at Yibei. The guy was silent. Zhao Han said, since his friend gave his tacit consent, then they went. The car was moving at full speed, but Annie kept up with them. Zhao Han was surprised at her speed. At the research center, Zhang Han and Tang Tang were very impressed when they saw the monster. They asked Yibei how did this happen. The rescued girl introduced herself as Jelena. She lives in the western region of Anxi. When the disaster broke out, she and her sister left for the south. The monster bowed. The girl introduced her as her sister Joan. Along the way, she was caught by the so-called Organization of Darkness and turned into this. 
Tang Tang exclaimed, calling Joan cute. Zhang Han asked in horror, what kind of organization is capable of this? Tang Tang came closer to the monster and asked if she could touch it. Let him not be afraid, but Joan dived into the water. The girl said, she is so afraid of strangers, is it embarrassment or social phobia? Zhao Han asked Lena why she was at the construction site. There was no water or food, and besides, the girl was alone. Lena replied that initially there was a person who took her with him. They were hiding from the zombies together. But at a certain point he had to leave, he said to wait at the construction site. Zhao Han asked, he never returned. The girl nodded. He dared to lead her through a city infested with zombies. Who was he? Lena replied that the stranger gave her a cloak sticky with zombie flesh and blood. He said that this way you can hide your smell and the zombies won't feel it. She picked up the blue cloth. Xiao Han said, Is this really the same person? Yao Yu ran out to them, she called Lina. Is this man she's talking about a tall man with short hair? Wasn't his name Yao Hei Peng by any chance? The girl answered positively, she asked, Is Yao Yu his daughter? The girl said that it was her dad and fell to the ground. Everyone rushed towards her, Tang Tang said. Why did she run out of the room? Zhang Han asked if she was okay. Xiao Han asked Yibei, Maybe they should go look for Yu's dad again. The guy replied that night would soon come, and it would become even more dangerous outside. In addition, the exoskeleton requires repairs. The defenses around the scientific institute still need to be strengthened. Zhang Han went to the guy and demanded that he explain everything properly. He knows everything, doesn't he? The old man said that he does not know for what purpose Yibei is protecting these secrets, and does not know what he is fighting against. And although he does not want to meddle in his personal affairs, his soul is not at peace. Zhao Han supported the doctor's words. Now, if something happens to Yibei's friend next time, and they can't help, then it will all be over. The young man remained silent, and then added that it was time to talk. He'll tell you everything. Everyone gathered in the room when Yibei said that he was the one who returned to the past 50 years later. Zhao Han said, this is time travel. He knew that Yibei was not an ordinary person. Dr. Zhang Han exclaimed, has he returned to the past? Will such a possibility really exist? How does this happen? Does the physical body or consciousness move? Tang Tang said thoughtfully, after 50 years, will the human race still exist? Incredible. Yibei said that the source of everything is still black gold. It is the cause of the disaster in scientific and technological progress. They studied black gold to figure out how to fight the zombie virus. And the latest achievement was a time machine. It made it possible to move consciousness in space and time within the framework of studying the energy of black gold. Zhang Han exclaimed, because then, Yibei agreed, although they had the opportunity to go back in time, they were unable to prevent the appearance of the zombie virus. They could only shift consciousness to the very early period of the virus outbreak. The doctor examined the composition of black gold. It is not similar to the elements found on Earth. Due to the loss of data, they can only believe that most likely this thing came to us from beyond the heavens. Xiao Han asked if this was an alien invasion. The guy said that he could, but if that was the case, then the aliens should have already enslaved them. The virus wiped out humanity from the face of the earth for several years. Fifty years later, there are very few people left in the world, tens or several millions, maybe even less. But even despite this, people did not stop fighting and killing each other over resources. In the organization that Yibei was a part of, all of his predecessors were older than him, but they were all killed. In the end, he was left behind, and he got to complete the organization's final mission to go back in time and restore everything. Zhao Han said, now it's clear why the guy collected black gold so furiously. So in fact, he is already more than 50 years old. Yibei replied that it was quite possible that he was over 70. Regardless, his mind returned to the moment when he first saw the zombies at school. When enemy soldiers stood at their walls, there was no time to make accurate calculations. After his partner teleported him, he had to blow up the laboratory, thereby burying the time machine under these remains. And he doesn't know how they checked the results of the experiment. Xiao Han said that this was the first time he had heard Yi Bei talk so much, it was enough for the plot of the book. Tang Tang said, since he is talking about his life, are they his future partners? The guy replied that he was not sure, but he would like to hope that it was so. The man asked what he meant. Will there be changes in the future? Yibei said that they had already happened. Doctor, Tan Tan has already studied the properties of the zombie virus. Did she manage to find out anything? The girl said that she had already mentioned that it was a miracle how three could survive at all. 
In fact, the zombie virus is not only infected by a zombie bite, it is transmitted through airborne droplets. The men jumped up from their seats. How could they? Tang Tang said, they are chosen by heaven, the antibodies in their bodies prevent the spread of the virus, and this is amazing. But this does not guarantee that after a zombie bite, they will not undergo changes. Yibei confirmed her words, the organisms are indeed infected with the zombie virus. As a rule, even if they are not bitten, sooner or later they can turn into zombies. They are immune to the airborne virus, but this does not mean that they have nothing to fear. Xiao Han said that this was terrible. No wonder Yi Bei didn't tell them anything. The guy had previously doubted whether it was worth talking about it, but what happened today confirmed his guesses. He noticed that someone had accelerated the spread and mutation of the zombie virus. Everyone wondered, who is this? The guy said, Organization of Darkness. At this time, Zhu Bo looked at his hand. It was no longer burning. He became a man. He really became human again. The man with glasses said that he is now officially a member of the Organization of Darkness. Zhu Bo thanked him. A certain girl was standing at the door. Yi Bei said, at that time only a small percentage were infected by airborne droplets. Mostly everyone became infected from a zombie bite. Also, the time for zombies to absorb sunlight for the first wave of mutation has changed from several weeks to a couple of days. The likelihood that ordinary people will turn into abnormalities has also increased. If we take into account today's super beast and those fused anomalists, without a doubt the organization of darkness worked on them. Yibei is sure that she also sent her people from the future, but he does not know whether they restored the destroyed time machine. Zhao Han reasoned, since the organization of darkness has time machines and a way to control the zombie virus, why didn't they go back in time to save humanity? The guy replied that, unfortunately, this organization will do anything but save humanity. They recognize anomalous creatures as higher beings than humans. And they intend to create a world in which anomalies will dominate. In other words, their goal is to destroy humanity. Tang Tang called them naive. Dr. Zhang Han thought about it. He took several medicines from the black boxes that Zhao Han brought for analysis. And I discovered that this composition is similar to the composition of black gold. This is quite actively contained in the drug solution. It looks like some kind of catalyst. Is it possible that the dark organization in the Tega distributed such drugs? Yibei replied that they could add it to tap water and drinks. Xiao Han said, after all, these medicines were in Yao Yu's dad's car. He can't be. The guy said that this should also be studied. As long as the organization of darkness continues to exist, humanity will not last even five years, and maybe less. Yibei needs to talk to Dr. Fu Zheng Han about the location of the Institute's defenses. The guy laid out the building diagrams on the table and showed where to install the poisonous gas developed by Dr. Der Tan Tan. And at this time, she will do everything possible to cure Yao Yu. The girl asked if the girl was his sister. Yibei didn't understand what the problem was, but Tang Tang said that it was just a medical issue. They did not have time to talk. The Institute must be strengthened immediately. Xiao Han goes to help. Night has come. Yao Yu woke up, stood up and noticed that Jelena was sleeping. The girl covered her with a blanket and left the room. She walked along the corridor and saw a light in one of the rooms. Tag Tan was sitting there. She said that that guy didn't look like an inventor. Perhaps his guesses were correct. She turned to the person she was talking to. The girl also hopes that coming here will be able to solve some problems. Who knows until there are more of them. Then she noticed the girl and asked why she went out again without permission. Let him return soon. Yao Yu complained that she couldn't sleep, so she wanted to go out. Tan Tan understood that she missed her father, but she couldn't neglect her health because of this. Dr. Zhang Han and everyone else are already resting. Yao Yu can meet them tomorrow. The girl said that she just heard the doctor talking to someone. She thought they were here too. The girl smiled and asked, did she notice? She was actually talking to him. Tang Tang touched the jar with the zombie head with her hand. She had been in love with this guy since childhood. He was still a moron. Yao Yu looked at the doctor questioningly. She continued to say, he was so meek, good-natured, timid, and often overestimated his strength. It was obvious that he didn't like being a doctor, but he still tried so hard to pass his exams. He was repeatedly refused, but he stubbornly continued anyway. Only he remained on her side. The old doctors who sit in hospitals and profit from the work of other people wanted to steal her research results. Only he dared to come to her defense and clear the girl's name. Even when this disaster happened, he also helped her. What an annoying guy. 
In the process of testing the poisonous gas, he allowed himself to be surrounded by zombies so that Tang Tang would have time to escape. After he became infected, he tried to fight the zombies, but they tore him apart. And when the girl looked at the mutilated corpses that lay everywhere, she no longer knew where exactly his remains were. And she keeps thinking, after connecting all the parts, will it be possible to return him? Tang Tang noticed the girl's blank look and laughed, saying that it was a joke. Resurrecting zombies are no longer funny. The girl apologized she didn't want Yao Yu to remember all this. The girl asked if she really liked him very much. The doctor replied that when she saw such a handsome guy like him, she could not help but fall in love. Tang Tang asked Yao Yu to go back to bed. She would stay here a little longer and then go diving to look for Miss Annie. Yao Yu nodded and left. She walked towards the pond. Annie appeared from the water. She saw the girl and said that she was a kind girl. Yao Yu introduced herself and asked how the monster was feeling. She replied that she wanted to hide so that people from the Organization of Darkness would not find her. They treated her so cruelly, Yao Yu asked, was she hurt? Her body became so uncomfortable. Annie replied that it's scary to remember, but now it doesn't hurt. Yao Yu stroked the monster's skin. It asked if she herself was in pain right now. The girl replied that she could get used to it if she was patient. Annie could really feel that way. Whatever they become, what matters is that they still remain human. Yao Yu covered her consciousness, Annie caught her with her tail. Then Tang Tang appeared, she exclaimed in fear. What's wrong with Yao Yu? She told her to go back to the room, so why did she go outside? If he continues in this spirit, he will not be cured at all. The girl stroked her head. Yao Yu apologized and asked for help to finish the operation. Yi Bei and Zhao Han were in the workshop. At this time, Yao Yu's father walked to the container and called Miss Kaiao. Where did she go? Was she attacked by zombies? He examined the surface as a rule. If there is no bleeding, then the zombies won't feel you. The man noticed huge wheel tracks. Who was there? An anomaly appeared in the sky. Yao Yu's father immediately hid. He had already exhaled when the monster disappeared. When suddenly an old man appeared behind him, that's where he was hiding. It was getting light. Yao Yu was lying in the chamber under anesthesia. Tang Tang was about to perform an operation. Shang Han watched this from behind the glass, he asked. Will using black gold really help Yao Yu? He's worried about something. Yi Bei said that Dr. Tang Tang had prepared special chemotherapy drugs. Currently in remission. The girl needs time to get used to the energy of black gold. He combined a piece of the super beast's heart with red and black gold. The doctor will perform the operation using the formula he provided. As long as the chain reaction does not exceed the threshold of sensitivity, Yao Yu's life is not in danger. Zhang Han asked, Have similar experiments been carried out in the future? eBay also participated in the creation of anomalous creatures. The guy replied that this method is a side step in their creation. Some idiots call it the elixir of immortality, a gift to the privileged class. It is slightly effective in curing diseases, but eBay does not know whether it grants immortality. Zhang Han replied that this sounded even more alarming. The guy said if this method doesn't work, then they will have no other choice. The old man said, this is why he allowed Zhao Han to leave. It would be good if he could find Yao Yu's father. Zhao Han turned to Lina, there are a lot of ordinary zombies here, let him look on the left side. They are already near the construction site where they found her. Lina controlled the drone, she apologized for not being very good at it, just like with a computer. Having to view so many CCTV cameras at the same time is so difficult. And Yao Yu was very good at this. Xiao Han said that her father is a difficult person, he must notice them. The girl shouted that she saw him, he was running along the street on this side. Xiao Han exclaimed, she found him so quickly. The man was running away from the mutants, then threw back his cloak with an explosive mixture. The fire hit the monsters, but did not cause them any damage. No effect at all. Then a bright green beam hit one of them directly. It was Xiao Han in an armored vehicle. He turned around next to the surprised man and asked if he was Yao Yu's father. There is no time to explain. Let him quickly get into the car. The man hurriedly climbed into the cabin and asked to quickly take him to his daughter. Two men watched them from the roof of the building. One of them asked if they would let him go. Song Bin replied that they were all targets under the advisor's special attention and should be taken seriously. The bearded man said he thought otherwise. It would be better to deal with them right away. Dealing with petty dirty tricks is not their style. Song Bin replied that they do not have enough hands, and the man knows this well. Recently, a girl mutated into a higher anomalous. 
She took control of a thousand zombies to attack them, but was defeated. They came too late, and there was no way to save her life. The man exclaimed, a supreme anomaly capable of controlling a thousand zombies? What a loss. Song Bin replied that even one zombie is an irretrievable loss. Meanwhile, Xiao Han reached the research institute. Zhang Han exclaimed, is it really Peng? The man replied that they had not seen each other for a long time. He felt that he made them worry. He was sorry. The doctor doesn't know how to thank God or his incredible luck. Well, they won't waste time. The man needs to wash, go through disinfection, and see Yao Yu. The man looked at his daughter lying under the hood and asked how she was. The old man replied, when Zhao Han brought her here, she was doing well, but her condition has worsened recently. She was constantly busy searching for survivors, looking for him. The man grabbed his head. He was such an idiot. He should have returned earlier. The doctor felt sorry for him. He also had a hard time. They had a lot to talk about. He pulled out a black box and asked where it came from. The man said that's how they found his car. But to tell the truth, he himself doesn't know what it is. Zhang Han asked who gave it to him. The man replied that it was the Organization of Darkness that gave it to him. At first he thought that it was some kind of charitable association that helps deliver and distribute medicines. They agreed to help him cure Yao Yu, but he never thought that it would turn out like this. Shang Han asked, did he join them? Does he know how the medicine works? The man replied, he only knows that the appearance of zombies in the city is largely connected with this drug. It was because of what he found out about this terrible organization that he wanted to leave it. He pretended to continue delivering the goods. He wanted to return to pick up his daughter and leave with her, but unfortunately a crowd of zombies blocked his way. He returned too late, called Yao Yu to tell her to close the windows and doors and not go outside. But she disobeyed, maybe this is his punishment? He always told his daughter that there are many kind people in the world, he wanted her to do good deeds. And he himself helped the scoundrels do evil. He really is a terrible father, the man grabbed his head with his hands and shook. Then Dr. Tang Tang came up and asked him to stop crying, because Yao Yu was still alive. The girl introduced herself and said that she needed to take some of his blood, and it would be better if he were the biological father. Their blood types do not match the girl's blood type, otherwise they would have been able to cure her by now. Now he is the only hope. The man rolled up his sleeve and said that the doctor should take as much blood as needed, just let Yao Yu save him. Tang Tang said it was good that he was here, otherwise she would have had to use black gold to save her. The man shouted that she should not use black gold under any circumstances. Tang Tang looked surprised. Can I use this? Zhang Han asked if Peng knew anything about this. The man didn't know how to explain, but the Organization of Darkness is going to use black gold in one major experiment. In terms of scale, it will cover the entire city and will lead to the death of many people. Tang Tang retorted, haven't all the people in this area turned into zombies? And there are no immortals either. Peng said that black gold should never be used. It seems they said that this would affect everything that is in any way connected with black gold. Zhang Han said, they can only fight their enemies with black gold, so they have no other choice. The man grabbed the old man by the shoulders and began shouting that they should run. They couldn't stay here. They needed to go as far as possible. Zhang Han wanted to object, but the man wanted to take Yao Yu and leave, let them not interfere with him. Suddenly, Yi Bei hit Peng on the neck with a wrench. He was too noisy. The man fell to the floor. The guy turned to Tang Tang, let him quickly take blood and perform the operation. There is no need to waste time. At this time in the bar, Zhu Bo was asking other anomalous people how did the three join the Organization of Darkness. The bearded man replied that all his comrades had died and he was left alone. The young guy replied that he wanted to protect his only remaining comrade. Zhu Bo smiled awkwardly and said that they could become comrades, it would be great. But he thought there would be more of them. The man smiled and said, of course there are more of them. Members of the organization are scattered all over the world. They are all busy recruiting new people. The fair-haired guy said he was curious about what kind of society the anomalies could form. They no longer feel the need to eat, change their appearance at will, and they are no longer afraid of zombies. But is it so easy to combine them? The man noticed that this was well said. This is exactly the problem that the advisor is thinking about. Now they are listening to her. The guy asked if it was normal to listen to someone who came from the future. The man replied, you can believe in what the man from the future says. His name is Yu Feng, right? The advisor mentioned him and said that the guy would get a good job in life and would have good merit. 
Talented people become capable anomalists, Yu Feng spoke after all, Yi Bei also returned from the future, then why doesn't he want to become an anomalous? The man laughed, but because he is not very capable, that's all. It seems like they were classmates. The guy was a mediocre weakling, and it was unbearable for him to see how others lived better than him. Yu Feng replied Yi Bei, whom he knew before, and this one are two completely different people. The man said, well, it turns out that he is going to settle scores with those who used to mock him. Who is in favor of eliminating the thorn in Yibei? And let the anomalies quickly become the rulers of the world. Song Bin clapped his hands and said, Well said, the world that Yibei is striving for is too different from their imagination, so they should definitely get rid of it. But now they can still influence him, win him over to their side. He is locked in the shackles of outdated idealistic ideas, and they should help him get acquainted with new ideas. The man said, They are created from black gold, and this is the meaning of their existence. They abandoned their previous body and gained life. They want to study black gold in detail to become even stronger. They will become the most powerful race on Earth and in the entire universe. The anomalies spoke in unison, the organization of darkness is eternal. Meanwhile, at the research center, Xiao Han asked Yi Bei, he once mentioned his future partners, but where are they now? They must be young now, right? Would he be embarrassed if they found them but weren't recognized? The guy answered, as he already said, the present and future have changed, he doesn't know whether they are alive or dead. And it's not a fact that they can be found in the same places as before. Zhao Han asked how he would rebuild his team. Yi Bei replied that his partners are not specific people, but those who believe in the same idea as himself. The man asked what kind of idea this was. Yi Bei said, the destruction of black gold, anomalous people all over the world, and the return of human society. Zhao Han noted that it sounds simple, but in reality it seems like an unattainable dream. The guy answered, that's why there are few people on the team. In the end, in the future, people could not completely get rid of addiction and black gold, no matter how much harm it brought them. To continuously receive this, human cities regularly sent criminals, rebels, and outcasts to zombie camps. But even with such strict control, people preferred to silently obey in order to survive. There were fewer and fewer people who disagreed. 